Right, I'm here. I think. Okay. Yes, I am awake. Rob. Barely. Just trying to get things going. Okay, I'm better at practice, apparently. Right. Who we got? We've got Spain, Willem, Thomas, Rob, obviously, and LV blog. So far. Ian's here. Saw Ian just publish a new video a couple of hours ago. Obviously I haven't had a chance to watch it yet because I just woke up and come in here to do this. <clears throat> have to check that out later on. So we've got a few bits to play with. Um, counting caps. Counting caps, yes. Well, No. <laughs> Still just trying to get going. So I've got some bits of gear to look at. Um, I've got one which is more of a just minor thing probably. It's already sitting on the desk, I want to get rid of it. Ah, I left this out. That one. Yeah, that's, been, that's right. This is something I may look at in the live stream. You see it in the mailbag if you're. Maybe? Would you see it maybe? Oh, I don't know. Maybe sort of. I don't know. Can't keep track anymore. It's a. Uh, another webcam, but it's actually a really high quality one. It's to review. And I may plug it in during the stream and try using it. I'm sure it'll be better than the camera I'm currently using. Which is supposed to be a good camera, but I've never been happy with it. Yeah, yep. Yeah. This is full of Scots here. So I'll give you a bit of a teaser. Um, we've got this thing here to look at. It's an old analog scope. Now I've had this sitting on my shelf for six or seven years, probably some of like that. And um, yeah, I just want to basically put that tilting barrel back on it because I took the tilting barrel off years ago when I had it on my bench because it was in the way. I didn't need it. It's just made you know crowded space already more crowded. And um, basically, when I put the tilting barrel back on. Just you know that thing there, and probably power it up and have a look at it and see if it actually still works or not. Because so it's been sitting there for years, um, six, seven years probably, maybe longer. Haven't been powered up, so it could go bang. Yeah, if I know, but it's just an old analog sixty megahertz scope. I purchased it brand new from Dick Smith Electronics. Um, it was my first scope, and. Uh, yeah, it's it's sixty megahertz, isn't it? Yeah, sixty megahertz, and um, it probably still works. I used to use it for doing CB work. So we'll be looking at that. You know, power it up, have a little bit of a tinker with it, see if it still works, see if it looks like it's okay or not. I have absolutely no use for it. I mean, sometimes it is nice to have an analog scope for things, but. And I've said that to myself, and I say the situations where it would be nice, but um, I've never actually used it since I put it on the shelf. So, do I really need it? Probably not. Um, what it came about from was when I was doing HR twenty five ten radios, which uh, was present or unit in HR twenty five ten. They have a adjustment issue in part of the MCU circuitry, where they you have to look for a certain pulse, but you can't really see it very well. Um, it shows up okay on an analog scope because of the way it's 
it's sweeping it's just it shows up um i could probably get on a digital scope now now actually now, now to use one properly i could probably actually um you know get it to show up but that's why i kept this because when i was doing those particular radios you can only see it on that i couldn't see it on my digital scope at the time so hey christian I need to change caps here. Yeah, well, maybe I don't know. How long have I had that thing? Oh, it's a while. It must be about twenty years, surely. Yeah. So. <laughs> We'll have to see where that goes. I mean, what we may do something with it. It might go bang. It might need reefers doing. I don't know. I probably don't want to look that closely at it, to be honest. I mean, I'd actually like to give it away to someone. Yeah, I'd like to. I've got an Easter. I sort of think I'd like to give away to someone that's new to it, but. Yeah. It's a good learner scope, I suppose. It teaches the basics. You got approximately 100 unused reefers. Do you have cracks in them though? Are they all cracked? They're probably fine if, if they're not that old. I, don't, I think I've explained this before the reefer thing. Why they fail? No cracks, that's good. The um, All it is, the plastic shrinks. All plastic shrink as they degrade and as they age. All plastic shrink because they drop off monomer units and then makes them contract, right? Because the bond's still trying to pull together. And so all plastics, all plastic shrink, all of them do. It's just a natural process. And so when you've got a capacitor which is molded to shape, the plastic can't shrink anymore. So something has to give, it tries to stretch across those parts where it's shrinking, so it pulls itself apart. So it'll be shrinking across the, the axis, right, that plane, be shrinking down. And also, it's pulling against itself at the same time as it's trying to molecularly, molecularly um, shrink. And so, I'm trying to explain this simple way. So, so then it rips itself apart, which is what causes the cracks. They probably would see that, yeah, yeah, reef is dangerous. You have analog scopes, eh? It's a two on two and a two four six five. I've got a two four three two as well out in the other room. I've done some videos on that. Um, yeah, so I've got two scopes, which I, you know, I've got that one. I, I wouldn't mind giving it away if I, you know, I, if there's like a maker space I knew about around here or something like that, I'd give it to them. But I don't know of any. Um, yeah, I don't know. So it's not really worth anything, but it's more it's more worth its usage than anything else than money. It's not really worth you know, if I, if I try to sell that one we're gonna get for it, 30, 50 bucks, alright, if I'm lucky. It's not worth anything. It's worth more as a usable tool than the financial side of it. So yeah, I wouldn't give it away to someone. But posting it's not really practical because it costs more to post it than it's worth. Yeah. And I also got that set of Tetronix 2432A, which I was using for doing CB work for quite a while. That was quite a good one. Um, because that was. That had an output on the back. So you actually link it. I think it's channel 2 output. I think it was channel 2 had an output on the back. So it's like a buffered output. So whatever your signal you're, you're showing in channel 2, it would be buffered, amplified slightly, and shoved out the back of the unit. And then that socket on the back, I hooked, had hooked up to a fix counter. So when I'm probing around a CB circuitry, trying to do alignment stuff like that, using the, the probe on you know the scope, I could also see on the frequency counter what that circuitry was doing. Obviously, tech couldn't really show that much. You could see the waveform, see the quality of the waveform, that sort of stuff. But you couldn't really see the frequency unless you sat there and calculated it. So I had that range of frequency counter, and that worked really well. So I could just probe around also about a circuitry, or, or even just touch it on top of the transistor. And it'd be enough amplification to go through the chain and run my frequency counter. So I could be actually measuring frequencies inside the radio without even touching the circuitry. And I could actually get the frequency counter to trigger. And um, that worked really well. That's like the best feature of that scope. And I wish more modern scopes had that too. 
because that would be brilliant. But then, I don't know, you've got built-in frequency counters now. But the sensitivity is a bit trickier. I mean, you probably can't do it. I mean, the built-in frequency counters in these scopes these days are pretty good. They're accurate enough. So you can kind of do it. But they're not as good as a standard iron frequency counter, which has got an ACXO on it, or, or GPS distance block oscillator or something like that. Anyway. Yeah, so that's a good use for that. Problem is those old scopes have I been mean, they're big as you can see from you know this thing, it's pretty big, you know, top view. Right, as they are, just the nature of them. So we'll have a look at that, give a quick check over, see if it seems alright or not. And I've got some other things to look at as well. We'll just quickly do it. I mean I don't think that'll take too long, you know, we'll chat the pull it apart, stack the bell, put a talking bell on it, have a look inside, see if it looks okay. Power it up, give it a quick test, see if it still works. You know, exercise capacitors, see if anything goes bang, and um, put it back together and chuck it to one side, move on to the next thing. So, I've got a few things I want to look at because my room's getting a bit crowded. Um, I've got a pile of stuff here behind me which needs to be cleared out. I've also got a revisit. So, I've got a uh, the HP 18 gigahertz frequency generator there. Right, I've got that sitting there. Because I never finished it, right? And it really, really bugged me that I never quite finished it. So what's actually done there is we did through, went through and replaced a whole bunch of parts and fixed some indicators and switches and things like that, right? Did all that. And it, it's working. But we also looked at capacitors. And at the time, I looked at the capacitors, and it's $150 worth of caps to replace four capacitors. So at the time, I sort of I wasn't really happy about that. And I left it, and for months, was it two, three months since I did that, I've been regretting not changing those caps, because that's how I am. I know those caps are going to be a problem, I know they will give me trouble. Next time I've got to use this thing for an actual use, um, because that's what I've got it to use it occasionally, it's like once in a blue moon I'll use it, I know that it's a really good chance that when I go to use it it will blow up. <laughs> so I want to replace those caps I've got some caps I've purchased them they're sitting on my desk so I'd like to go back and actually swap those caps out with new ones um, and hopefully they're the right size because I went from memory about the, the screw spacing because they're screw mount ones so hopefully I've got the right ones if not we won't be doing much with that one you've installed HP 1980 four channels 1980 I can't say I've seen that one. Exploding stuff is fun. Yeah, well. Not if I'm trying to do a job with it at the time. My phone's going off. Why's my phone going off? What's the YouTube notification? Apparently I've gone live. I hope it tells everybody else, not just me. <laughs> hmm. Anyway, so yeah, we'll, we'll tinker around through things. And so I've got this camera here, which I've got to review. Yeah. And focus, you bastard. This is exactly why I want to try this camera out. <laughs> because it's actually, I've had a bit of a play with it already. It does work. There are some limitations with it on my system. Probably be fine on the Windows machine. Um, so I probably will plug this in today during the stream and we'll swap over to it and you guys can tell me what you think as well compared to what this camera is, might do some befores and afters or AB kind of thing um, yeah, I don't know, it, it seems alright I think it depends a lot on lighting, lighting is quite important like this is right now set up quite well for this particular camera it took me a while to get this camera to work quite right and I still have issues with this camera, right, so this is a Logitech C922 and yeah it's okay I mean I did some videos where I actually pulled the thing apart and fixed the focusing on it because the focus was always very slightly off on all of the C922s I've ever had the focus was always very slightly off um, so I did a video about fixing that and um, I've never really been completely happy with like, the whole focusing thing where you know you try and put something up to hold to the camera and it just ignores it 
You know, it's still in the background now, okay? That sort of stuff. So, yeah. I wanted to try a different camera. Uh, I've got these other ones, which are Hick Vision cameras, which I've put on my desk views here. They work quite well, but they don't do the lighting so well here. They don't like the bright light so much. Like coming from the side, it tends to wash it out too much, which is why I put them on the desk instead. So, like for the side view, you can see how bright that is, and that's with no extra lighting. When I put the other lights on, like this one, you know, it, it struggles with that a little bit. So it's trying to come right. It kind of, you know, they're okay, but um, yeah, want all the focus crap on on the C922. C920 is the same. Um, yeah. And the other issue I have with this is that the um. Well, on this particular system, you've got 902? I'm not familiar with 902. Okay. Um, what was I going to say? I've forgotten. I've got distracted by something outside with a cat running around. <laughs> um, oh, okay. So, when I changed my computer to this computer and upgraded the system and stuff like that, I had an issue with this camera being stuttery. So, what happened is when I first powered it up, it would just show like one frame every five seconds. It would be like a whole bunch of stills, just like five seconds here, you know, one five, five seconds, and so five seconds later, do another still, and then another still. Unless I fire up the application which is used to set the settings on the camera. The other thing is with the camera, it doesn't say the settings. So if you set the settings up, you have to do it every single time you power it, or every time you got to use it. It's a pain. Um, and I, even though I did that before I started a stream, when I opened up OBS, it was still glitching. I had to open a program up again on the camera app to reset the settings, and then OBS was smooth. So this camera is a pain now. It used to be kind of okay, but it's glitching and it's not being good. Whereas when I plug this one in, it just worked. So this is something I want to look at as well. But we'll do that after we've played with some test gear. 922, yep. Yeah. yeah, that's what this is 922. Um, okay. So I think on Windows maybe it'll be alright, but on Mac it just isn't really great. It just. There's no. They haven't really put any support in it. The app I've got is really old. It. Logitech did a like a half ass job building this thing. I think although Logico Logit can I say it? although Logitech is a big brand, I think the quality isn't what it should be for the size of the brand. My experience with Logitech equipment has been on a service it looks okay, in reality, not so much. It's face value stuff, you know. Anyway, let's jump over here. We'll do some work on the bench. We'll play some test gear, and we'll see what we do, get done. I've so I've got a few things here I want to look at, and um, main, my main purpose today is to try and get some space back in this room. Right? Um, I think we'll do this first. Then I've got, I suppose I need to record video as well for these other things. I won't record video on this, but I've got some things here which I do want to record video on because that's why I purchased them is to record video. So I'll do something with that. Um, I have to think about which order we do them in. I'll think about that. Okay, let's go. Should I do HDMI? No, no, we're used to using more cameras. We'll use side camera. Hey, we'll use that one. Or this one. Which one should we use? That one looks a bit wonky, doesn't it? It just doesn't look right. Does it feel like they're falling over? Or is it just me? quality is crap yeah it's just the quality is not there I think I'll go with this camera maybe oh, I could do HDMI I can control what you guys can see a bit better I could just do that one and adjust it slightly how's that we'll do that Yeah, we'll do that. We'll do that. Okay. 
And I should probably get my other little tablet running as well, so I can see your comments and chat. If you can complain, you can't see a damn thing. That kind of thing. Stop using logic years ago. Yeah, don't blame me. Come on, boot up. I do actually have a um, an iPad here somewhere. Where is it? Maybe better than this. Certainly faster. Much bigger screen. Also takes up much more space. This is quite convenient because it's in the corner of the desk out of the way. It doesn't get too big. Of course, now I've got to boot this up and get it all working because I should have done this before the stream. But I forgot. YouTube, come on, show me the chat. Yeah, I got so I've got to pull this cover off, and we'll have a look inside, see what we, look, see what we see, and then I'll reattach this thing. And then we'll power it up with the cover off in case anything goes bang. Come on, start up. Any day now. It's going to start any day now. This one does not like starting up. Come on. Where's my live stream? Show me the live stream. This is why I should get this to the game before the stream, you know? Because. Where's my channel? Show me my channel. Oh, why was I have trouble with this bloody thing? Go to my channel. Go to the live stream. So many hoops go to through. Stop playing. Do you just want to chat? Stop playing. All right, okay, I think we're there. Any day now, yes, here we go. It's going, I can see the chat now. Well, there's a mission. So yes, this is gonna go on there. Let's move this out of the way for now. So, let's get these screws out first. I remember when I got this thing, I attacked this tilting barrel off. I thought, well, that's such a mission to get off. It's such a pain. It's like, well, actually, after all the other gear I've worked on, it actually ain't that bad. <laughs> I just remember thinking that. It's you know, such an annoyance having to take the tilting barrel off. It wasn't that easy to get off, you know? It's like, well, actually, it is. Anyway. So I might change the top view as well and change its camera angle, try and get it so it's not wonky. And then show you inside, might be easier that way. So I've had this thing for a long time. I, I don't, remember, don't remember exactly, I don't know if it's got a date on it anywhere. It might do. Let's have a look. But, um, yes, yeah, this is my, my very first scope, is this thing. Too dusty in there. Let's change camera views. Uh, desk top, is that going to work? Yeah, it is going to work. Let's try and make it so it's not so wonky. I think maybe I'll knock it or something. Yeah. Something, maybe. Everything's all coming loose. 
Oh no, I've ruined it now. The mount's coming off the shelf, everything's spinning. <laughs> Well, you guys want a closer view too, don't you? Do I have a zoomed one of this? I do have a zoomed one of this. There we go. That's better. Feel seasick. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Which bit's wonky? Probably me, actually. Marginally better. Okay. Hopefully things aren't reflecting off too badly. Doesn't look too badly in there. Um, so we've got a push switch here, which is this one here. And what's that one? That is the component tester. This got a component tester on it, so you can do like curves on it in a way. That's our little feature it used to have, which is quite nice. There's another thing here, I don't know what that is. that one there? Beat finder. You've got a B-fine switch and a client test switch, and you've got some little trimmers in here. Ooh, very analog. Love your old tube. Um, can I find a date on these chips? Got the dust off it. Maybe I can see a date. This says 95 in that chip. This one's not pretty very well, can't really see it. This is 97. So it's 97, alright, okay. What else? This is 97 as well. So it's at least 97, at least. I wonder if there's anything in here which actually has a day code in it, apart from the chips, because they've been made years before, you never know. On the back. See, this is the other thing I liked. I think I'm just going to shove on camera because of the lighting, might be drowning it out. It is drowning out, let's turn it off. There you go, you can see better. Um, channel B, signal output, right, it's so exactly the same as the Tetronics. You pass through, you got a amplified output through this channel here, which allowed you to plug a fixer counter in. That was really useful. Is it better without the light? I think it might be better without light, isn't it? So actually you've washed out this. This is a really sensitive camera, these Hikvision ones, they're actually really good for low light. Make it easy, yeah. Hey Dave. Right. Okay, well, it all seems to be visually okay. AC main stuff comes in. So this hasn't been powered up for years. Got a transformer there, which is shielded. Got something else underneath his metal can here. Probably the reefers are, so when they explode, it catches them. And you think I'm joking? <laughs> nah, I am joking. It's fine. There probably are no reefers in here. Not this vintage. It's a bit too new for that. And there's the front panel, which is looking all very well, apart from being very dusty because it's been sitting on a shelf for years. Um, very yellowed it's extremely yellowed and you actually see i don't even see it on camera or not get the shadows off it can you see, i don't know if you can see it but it's like there's a gray stripe and there's a and this yellow and there's a gray a slightly gray stripe there and there's a gray stripe here where the light's been coming across at this angle <laughs> and where there's a shadow it's still gray and where it wasn't it's all gone yellow so that's obviously a, a uv light thing where the light's been coming across it and it's been Doing it, it's got the whole panel's like it. The whole panel has got these like lines across it where it's been shadowed, which is a bit of a shame. But uh, anyway, there's the actual information about the front there. It's the uh, Q1806 or PS605. So you use this thing for quite a while. So maybe probably, I don't know, maybe five years or so before I got the Tetronics, and I used the Tetronics until I got digital scope. Got the like the siglant from Rob. 
Okay, well, let's power it up. Let's do that. Let's power it up and see if it goes bang. I'll do some little testing on it. Um, yeah, you never know, I might get some caps exploding. Could get lucky. Now, is this a multi voltage? So, well, it's got a transformer on there, so I don't think it is. It's got a voltage selection switch, which will be the right one. So, we can power this up gently and give it a bit of a chance to. Uh, Recover before it goes bang. So we're back in the shot. So I'm going to wind the down. Because it is a transformer, I can wind up gently, it will gradually increase it. So, um, should we turn the power on at the same time? I think we should turn the power on. Power switch is on. So I'm doing 50 volts, and it's only doing 1.5 watts so far. That's 75 volts, 3.8 watts. Of course, I may not actually like going slowly, but uh, we'll see. That 100 volts, that's 6.5 watts. I'm just waiting for the bang. Oh, I heard something. I heard a little crackle, like a little click. Could be something turning on, could be in the CRT. Um, it's 116 volts at 9.5 watts. Okay, let's do 140 volts. Let's do 14 watts. It's a whining. It's 180 volts, doing 22 watts, and I've got a beam on the screen. I don't know if you can see it, but there's now a line across there that is starting to go. It's very slightly wonky, it needs the rotation, but uh, it's working. Let's wind up some more. So that's 200 volts. Hey Alan. Rui. 25 watts at 200 volts. 220 volts, 28 watts. 230, 30 watts. Yeah, okay, well, it's running. It didn't go bang yet. I might just turn the power egg off again just to give the caps a chance to have a rest. Just in case they are on the verge of going or something. I'd rather have them reformed than just blow up. But uh, it seems to be functional. Amazing. Stick on the shelf for years. I don't know, it's been a long time since I've used this thing. Long time. Um, I think. Maybe it's about eight years. Might be about eight years since I've used this thing. So, yeah. Have we gone again? You can hear whining. It's probably for CRT stuff. You got two you need to fix. Alright. Well, still powered up. Um Can I better use this bloody thing? I don't know. <laughs> uh, intensity. Focus. Yeah, those are working. The thing that's getting me is this two channel scope, but I can only see one beam. There's one. Don't even see it on camera or not. Where's the second one? There we go. Second one's there too. That's by, both beams are there. That's working. Great. Um, okay, well that's 
good. I suppose we chuck a signal in it to make sure it's actually registering a signal properly. I might change camera views for that. Um, I might clean some of this dust out as well afterwards before I put the cover back on. So that's alright, that's a functional analog scope. Great, um, let's get a signal into this and we'll try it out. Let's do this view. Power off because I drop a, a PNC into the chassis. <laughs> that would be bad at all, would it? Very dusty. So this is a nice little simple thing just to look at. You know, I just want to basically just quick one side over it. Then we we'll move on to something else. I've got some capacitance standards here I need to do videos about. Both need repair. So those will be you know, probably quite quick to do, I imagine. If only I had a tilting barrel on this, I'd tip it up so you can see what I'm doing. <laughs> CRT, oh, yeah, well, yeah, don't touch that bit. <laughs> don't touch that bit. Oh, it's over here. But then you don't touch it. No touchy. High voltage stuff, keep out of it. Yeah, you can see the parts, right? I mean, it's simple, isn't it? I mean, it's all like laid out in front of you, it's all simple. It's a technology you can actually follow through in a circuit diagram and actually work on, which is why I like working on this older gear. Um, you know, modern stuff like the modern siglants and you know example or the modern rigals or whatever um, trying to repair those completely different ball game I wouldn't even know where to start and all that stuff and this is something simple like a power supply you obviously got to try and trace it out yeah, do that so I can at least see it uh, what should we do channel 2 let's do yeah tinker that's there yeah okay both about the same setup, that's alright. Okay. Right, let's turn this back on. I'm not sure about where's my settings here. One volt division. So about to one volt division. Okay. I might turn some of my lights off so you can see what I'm doing because these cameras are sensitive, like I said. You got something there? Time base? Uh, no, it's not time base. What's that, man? That's today. That's the day time. Or something. I don't know how to use this thing now. There you go, you've got something there. And there's that delay time base that side. I can't even see what I'm doing here. That's time based today, right? Day time position. I might just leave that somewhere. I don't know. Maybe I'll use this bloody thing. Anyway, so we've got a time base there, one channel. Um, so Let's do it that way around. Okay, triggering. Where's my triggering? Coupling. Auto coupling source. There you go. Well, the intensity is pretty good, isn't it? I've got XY mode set up. Point 0.5 volts of vision. Jesus, look at that one doing. <laughs> Mm 
yeah okay that's that anyway that's XY mode so I'm doing a sine wave on one and on the other let's change one of these frequencies XY mode is not something I tend to play with but I should get something out of this surely if I'm going to have use it I've got something wrong here which one have I ever on? Main, okay, there's, there's XY there. Shouldn't that be doing something? I don't bloody know. Why can't I get this XY mode to work? Should I read the chat and t have you guys tell me how to what I'm doing wrong? What am I doing wrong here? Jesus, it's been a long time since I used this thing. <laughs> that should be XY. Okay, well, it's doing something. Let's try that. There we go, now we're getting something. Oh, well, she was right, we're getting something. Anyway, it is working. Both channels are working. It's going from Guatemala. I wish I could get this bloody do what I want to do. Why is this not doing what I want to do? Um, maybe I'm just going too bloody fast. Let's do one hertz on that one. And channel two ah right okay that's what it is i've got this set up bloody wrong because i'm an idiot um and there's cable in the way as well of course it is here we go that makes more sense if i get the generator set up properly it definitely makes it help Yeah, well, a moving dot comes out on camera with a refresh rate on the screen and stuff. I don't know how well that comes out. Is that enough to come out? Oh, can you see it? Oh, you can, kind of. Yeah, great. What is I had one channel running way too fast. Anyway, so obviously both channels are working. You can do XY mode just fine, so that's alright. That's what I'm making with the chest, so a bit of a play with that. It's doing its thing. So, all good. Put the covers back on this thing. Well, I'll go and quickly dust it out. I'll take it on to do that. And um, then we'll put the toddy barrel on, put it back to one side, once it's back together, and move on to the next thing.
2225 has horizontal sweep unless you put it on a very small time base. No horizontal sweep, right. Okay. I'll quickly pop outside, give us a dust out, and um, it won't take me long. So I'm just out the side of the door there, and I shall be right back. This is when I zap myself on a high voltage CRT. If you hear me scream, you know what's going on. Back in the room at least. Where did my solder iron gone? Oh, wait, is Ian still here? Ian seems to have disappeared. He normally tries to steal my solder iron when I'm gone. Right, I think it's the worst of the dust out of there. So I need to put the tilting barrel back on this thing. The yeah, sole purpose of putting it apart, putting it off a shelf. Well, I need to get off a shelf because I need more storage space, right? So all these bloody things I keep buying in mail bag, they need somewhere to go, right? And so. I'm gradually filling up all these storage boxes and then having to reorganise them because they're getting too full when I've got to solve. Change the categorizations of things to help get the boxes to have enough content space in them. And uh, yeah, it's been fun, I suppose. The um, Yeah, so just... I was running out of shelf space, so I, this is sitting on my shelf, taking up space. So, right, okay, I need to get this out of the way. So I've got storage space for the bins I use for the stuff I get in my bag. Which is entirely why I'm doing this, because I needed the space. Because I don't need this thing sitting up there anymore. I had it up there, so I thought I might use it, and I haven't used it in years. So... Anyway... Not this time, Ian. Ian didn't steal my soldering on this time. He's a bit slow to the mark that time. <laughs> right. Let's get this thing back on. Well, I've got nothing to discharge CRTs with apart from my fingers, and it's generally a bad idea. So I prefer just to keep away from them. <laughs> this has got a slot into the front, like that. So I get the screws all lined up, get them in place, then I'll tighten them up after. I'm sure I've got all the chassis parts all lined up. Right, 
And that's that little project out of the way and dealt with. I've been meaning to do this for ages. Because it's always been a bit of a pain because sitting on that shelf up there, it's like, oh, I've got to get up there and get the thing off the shelf. A bit awkward to get to. A bit heavy. So, it's one issue I've been putting off for a long time. Anyway, this can then go out into the other room and. I don't know where it's going to go out there. Actually, the other room's getting pretty full too. <laughs> Got too much Tesco in here. I wonder why that is. This keeps, the, keeps on appearing. Posty keeps on bringing it to me. Uses Enterprise experts in space. Yes. So someone yank out the by hand. Well, some of a death wish. Anyway, all right. Like I said, I'd like to give this away to someone. Really, I mean, if I can find someone near me where I can literally just give it to them, then I wouldn't mind doing that. I've got no use for it, it's just sitting here taking up space and someone could get use out of it. Once I figure out how to use it. I think I've still got the original manual laying around for this thing somewhere too actually. That wasn't really much of a manual for me rightly. I don't throw things away like that, I just, you know, manuals and stuff, I keep them all. Um, so I've probably got a little manual booklet or something somewhere for this. So when I dusted this thing off, I didn't dust off the front panel. Oh, never mind. I'm going to let dust again. I'm going to put it in the other rooms. So. That's fine. Let's have it done. Um, no, I've got a brush here. Let's do this. Let's put dust on my desk instead. Eh? Get with the worst of it. Yeah, we definitely should have done this outside. <laughs> Let's put this somewhere else and we'll work on a different project. Now the question is, which thing are we going to work on next? Um, I think maybe this. Uh, Google for a local men's shed. Men's shed. Okay, googling now. Men's shed. Registered charity. All right, okay, never heard of them. It's about men's health, apparently. Sure, that's the right thing. Um, about us, objectives. Just quickly reading this. Oh, okay, so it is like project stuff and. Okay. Waikato region. All right. So there's a few around. Okay, that's an option. 
I should bookmark that. Thanks for that tip. Um, if I remember to do a bookmark, it'd be great. Why am I forgetting to do a bookmark? For God's sakes. <laughs> it's one of those days. A bookmark. I shall note this as a place I could give things to potentially. And being older people, potentially, an analog scope is going to be more suited to them too. That would be a good fit, I think, rather than one of these modern digital things, you know, where it's a bit more complicated. These are very really too simple, although I struggle with them. <laughs> uh, let's just make sure I leave my bookmark around so I don't lose it. Because it always puts it at the bottom of the list, and I want it more towards the top of the list. Right, there we go, top of the list, okay. Now I won't lose it. Okay. All right, Rory, it's got to go. Okay, thanks for dropping by, Rory. So the problem is trying to send something to somebody else is fine, but. It's not like this, like this, this scope I want to get rid of, right? It's big, relatively heavy. Not super heavy, it's relatively heavy. I don't know, was it 5, 10 kilos? I don't know exactly. But it's um, it's going to cost more to post it than it's worth. So it makes it kind of not worth it. I'd rather just have it somewhere I can go somewhere and give it to them and say, here you go, have a scope. <laughs> Make use of it. So that's what I'd rather be doing. Probably change camera view things. See what I'm talking about. <clears throat> maker shed also. Maker shed. Is there a maker shed in New Zealand? I don't know. I don't know about the maybe stuff. Now I've got to look for that too. I've got lots of things out here. I could actually give away. All right, I've got stuff here which. Even though I've been trying to sell it for a long time, it's like, well, I've got multimeters sitting out there, right? As Datron multimeters, six nine digit multimeters. I'm trying to sell them, it's like, no interest. You know, they look too old. People aren't interested in buying them. Even though the price is pretty good compared to what they are on like eBay, for example, I've got them cheaper than they are on eBay. Even though I've had to put money into fixing things. Um, so things like that. And because they're a relatively simple interface, for an older person, that'd be great, you know, it'd be easier to pick up. Seems to be Mrs. Deaf, I'm sneaking into the room. I can see her. I need a mouse pad. There, there she is. Hello. Uh, and the answer is no, there is nothing in the Zen, at least based on that name. I don't want to sneeze now, so it's bloody dust in it. You got a problem, both your storage room has to be converted back to bedrooms. Standing home only, I don't know you. I feel your pain, I know the, I know the feeling. Not in our room. Well, you struggle to sell it, yeah. I mean, analog scopes still have a place, right? If you think audio works like that, you can still use them for that. Or even this basic stuff, you can still use them. They still have a place. It's just not as nice as a modern digital scope. But the thing is, though, these analog scopes, they'll probably still work in 15, 20 years' time, right? 20 years, there's a good chance it still works. You may need to recap it, but it will still work. You get one of these modern scopes, is it still going to work in 20 years? Probably not. And if it does die, then you probably can't fix it. That's a trade-off, you know. Hey Peter, how's it going? You notice you've got an extra thing there now. Oh, 
I finished my coffee. I oh, did. It's empty. Lucky to get five years more than crap. Well, I don't know. How old's that scope I bought from you, Rob? That first one, that 2000 series. God, that's a while ago. Um, that must be seven years. That still works. Fine. Although I think I need to clean the controls on the front. The radio encoders. 2015. Okay. Yeah, so that's nine years, right? So there's a. I've got a signal scope in my other room. Nine years old. Still works. But one of the. Um, which which adjustment was it? One of the. One of the knobs on it is giving me a little bit of trouble. I think it just needs to clean, it doesn't get that much use. Um, a bit of voxelization or something's got in there. I need to, just need to pull it apart and give it a clean up. But otherwise, it still works. Fine. How much control it was now? It's just one of them. Let's recapture 3478A. Oh, yeah. I used to have one of those. Um, I did a video on it. I don't think I recapped it. What did I do to that? I honestly don't remember. That was, that was years ago. Um, yeah, it's a little. Was it five and a half digit? Was it five and a half digit? Multimeter? multimeter? That's right now. I need to look at it. I have it in my list. Let me look at my list. HP. Um, it's in here somewhere. Maybe. Or did I? Maybe I didn't do a video on it. I don't see it. Now I've got to do a search. Thank you. Three four seven eight A. Um is no, that's manual stuff. I don't have a video on it. I never did a video on that. I must have just bought it and used it. Damn it! You caught me out on something. Put one of five two e. Oh yeah. A fire phone. Okay. Three four six eight. I'm not familiar with that one. Is that an older version? Right, let's do some more. So, we've looked at that scope. That was easy. <laughs> Apart from setting it up to do XY mode. Mainly because I don't know how to use the thing. It's been so long. Um, right, we'll look at this thing next. Now, I want to do a video about this, so it's going to take a bit more effort and involvement. It's going to take longer. But I do want to do a video about this. It doesn't need much, but I want to pull it apart and have a look inside it. And yeah, top view. I don't know, is that any better? Um, yeah, so do video about this thing. It does work. We're always showing us a mailbag. Uh, can I? Yeah, I'll do a side view, zoomed and spin it around a bit so you can see what I'm talking about. I bet that was loud, I talked about by the mic. Uh, there you go, it's a capacitance, decade capacitor. And it did work properly, it seemed to be working fine. It's got a dent in the case and it's got a foot which is missing. And I basically want to pull it apart, have a look inside it, see what's in it. It's like an investigative thing and just explore it a little bit. Fix that dent if I can, which is going to be loud on the microphone I'm afraid. And um, and then replace the foot, and that's that piece done. I can move it now. I actually do want to have this in this room. The usual problem: where I'm going to put it. 
Um, yeah, I do actually want to have it in here. Because it would be a nice little thing to have because it is um, it does up to 10 microfarad, basically it's a 0 to 10 microfarad cap. Anywhere in between. So that is useful for doing testing. I, would, I do want to look at the accuracy more, more closely though as well and see uh, it's probably not really worth videoing that because it's going to be boring. But so I wanted to sit down with the OCR meter and actually check the accuracy of it and, and go through each one and be more thorough with it. I mean, I did the mailbag and I showed it briefly and I did check it out then and just verified that each one did actually work. But I wasn't looking at accuracy and how far out of tolerance they were compared to what they should be, that sort of stuff. So. Yeah, I mean, this would just be a, I could put tear down, have a look at it, and a video about that, and just exploring it. So I'll do that one, and I've got another one which is bigger, which I've also shown in my bag, which is actually a standard, um, which has got a broken handle, which I showed as I unpacked it. Part of that is actually I want to do a big video on that one. I actually want to try and get PCUA to make me a new handle for it using their CNC machining process. That's the plan. I haven't asked them if they'll do it yet. I'm assuming they might. If I approach them, they'll probably do it. But I'm not sure if they will. They may say no. I don't know. But we'll see. But that's a bigger project. That's something I need to sort of sit down in CAD and actually do it. Um, was there a program called FreeCAD I think I can use? I haven't actually looked into it yet. Um, this, this is industrial. No, it's just a standard. It's like probably used in schools and stuff like that, I'm guessing. It's quite old. This is a Telms unit. Um, it's a TR9308A. They're pretty old. I mean, I, I don't know. It's probably it's probably seventies. I'm guessing. Go as value matching. Two thirds of his parts went unused. Yeah. Well, you got to for tolerances, don't you? It's a thing. There's always a tolerance. Right, let's do video on this. So I need to change the camera and I need to get some more lights on. And I need to think about what the hell I'm going to say. <laughs> get the dust off the disc. And that's not working. Why is that not working? Give me a second. Why is that not working? What have I done? HDMI. There we go. Now we got it. It's not right, but we got it. Just give me a second to readjust. This is all wrong. Don't know why it's all wrong, but it is. It's probably an easy way of doing this. Can I do fit to a window or something? The reset transform, is that working? Here we go, reset, let's do that. Okay. Use FreeCAD? Okay, cool. Because yeah, I've been using Tinkercad, right? Everything I've designed so far, 3D for doing printing, has been in Tinkercad, which has been fine. It's got some limitations there about resolution, things like that, for doing curves and what have you, but it's worked fine. I've been happy with it, it's nice and simple to use. Very versatile. Um, but now, this thing I need to design is potentially much bigger. So the maximum size I can do on Tinkercad, I think, is 200mm, 20cm square, or cube, or something. And, um, yeah, so that's the largest it can do. Or is it 30? might be 30. I can't remember now. But this thing I need to design is bigger than that. So I need to look at a different source. And FreeCAD is something I found. I think somebody may have mentioned it in the previous live stream, actually. Or 
something. Maybe it's on a chat somewhere. So, that's what I need to get into yet. Use Fusion 360. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, I know that's a possibility too. That's paid though, isn't it? Fusion 360. If I can say it. Isn't Fusion. Wow, I'm having trouble saying that word. Isn't Fusion 360 um, like the owner of Tinkercad? Andrew reckons plus one. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I know about Fusion 360. That is an option, but used to be free for makers. Autodesk, yes, that's what I'm thinking. Of. Autodesk is the owner. That's right. You do both of them. So Fusion 360 was the upgrade. If Tinkercad wasn't good enough, <laughs> that's why there's limitations in Tinkercad. I think to encourage you to upgrade to the other one. I've got no idea how to get this thing apart yet. I, I don't even have a manual for this thing. I'm look for this. Did I find a manual? I need to see if I can find a manual for this thing. Let me go and have a quick look. You're just learning free CAD. What I catch you over go do it, okay. Let me have a quick look, see if I've got a manual for this thing. Um Helms looking for tea. I did not get a manual for this thing. That's so unusual. That's why I don't remember getting one. Because I didn't. Let's see if I can find one. Maybe that's why I don't have one. DR 9308A. Hmm, let's do PDF. Well, no, I can't find a manual. <laughs> it's probably one out there somewhere for it. There is a free version of 360. Okay. Okay. I think free CADs is probably what I want to try. I mean, I haven't done um, design for a CNC. I haven't done that design before. I've only done design for um, 3D printing. I'm guessing the process is basically the same. But yeah, that's what I need to do. I, well, I want to do. I've got so many projects I actually want to do. Getting the time to do them. Like sitting on my desk here. I don't think you can see it on camera or not there, but just at the back there. There's some screens, right? Those LCD screens. Know, LCD, I can't remember where. Might be. Oh, TFT, I can't remember now. But anyway, I've got some screens out there, which are to do a potential upgrade to the Advantage 6 and digit multimeter I've got, which has got the dying screen. So I've got those projects sitting there, things I want to sit there and, and work on. I haven't got the time. <laughs> Uh, I really want to do that before the screen dies so I can actually you know, make sure things actually work properly. But uh, anyway. three sixty's got a huge learning curve. I mean I've done some well, I, I have I view things in um Oh what the hell is it called? I've forgotten what it's called now. It's not three sixty, it's something else. It is AutoCAD, yeah, it's AutoCAD. But um, it's not Fusion 360, so it's an AutoCAD one. At work. It's used at work for evaluating designs. And I do that. right? So I actually get in there and I view the design and manipulate things and check things out and measure things and what have you. Right? So well, I have done that, but um, I haven't done any building in that system. So it's a bit different, obviously. Knowing how to construct something is a bit different. Open SCAD. So the other thing I need to do is make sure it works on Mac, right? It has to be a Mac program. 
because that's what I use as a Mac um, rather than a PC. I do have access to a PC, but it's an old one, it's just an old laptop, and I'd rather not be using that. I do have used it for things for doing electronics work, you know, like um, I show soon actually, I'm actually going to show it very soon in a video where I'm doing a CB radio conversion at Cobra 29 at Nuvon. I edited the video for that yesterday. So that'll be out maybe next week or the week after. I'm not quite sure which timeline I'm going to use yet. Um, but I'm showing using that laptop to do the uh, logic analyzer, the Zero Plus logic analyzer, to do some I2C, I squared C decoding. So that's what I use it for. There's things like that, you know. But I don't use it often. It's, it's not even in this room. It's, it's kept somewhere else, and I bring it in here if I need it. Um, you know, and power it up. But the battery's dead in it as well. It's knackered. <laughs> but um, I use a Mac. So anything I want to do is try and do it Mac based if I can. I know it's not always an option. Sometimes you have to do PC stuff. Yeah, Tinkercad's online. That's right. So I, I that's why I use Tinkercad because it's just. I can use it on the, on the Mac, doesn't matter. It just works. You know, it works quite well, actually. Right, let's play with this thing before the camera turns off because it got bored. So, what am I going to say about this? Um, let me just think about this. How to get it apart is one part of it. Let's do feet. That's not a problem, I've got feet. So 3D print one, I can always 3D print one. Come on, that part of the project, can I? 3D print a new foot. Done that before. I mean, you can do the I squared C decoding on a scope, right? So, like when I first did that video, one of the first steps I did was actually hook it up to my signal and scope here and do I squared C through the analog channels, right? Just really easy to do, nice and quick. And that gave me a starting point. But I needed to dive in it deeper. I wanted to export the information in a certain way. So, I knew that the other program I had on the PC could do that task. I mean, the signal can do stuff as well. But the, what I wanted to use was the PC software because it's just a bit more intuitive for doing that particular job. That particular job. Um, the scope is it's a compromise. It does the job, but it's a bit of a compromise. It's great if you don't have a logic analyzer. Let's put it that way. Um, okay. So. Right. Okay, I think I'm ready to start thinking. <laughs> uh, right. Wish my desk wasn't so bloody messy, but I've got these projects. Too many damn projects. It's so busy. Really wish I could get some time to do these things I want to do. Well, in a way, I kind of am doing what I want to do. That's what I'm doing right now, but there's things that I'd like to do rather than just working. Anyway, let's start. A picture of this. So we're looking at this thing today, which is a decade capacitor. It's quite a nice one. It's quite old. <coughs> it's a bloody dust again. Now, I've already done a bit of an overview on this thing when I got it on the mailbag. I showed it in mailbag, and I did do some testing on it to make sure all the switches work, which are really nice switches, actually. They're really, really nice positive switches. They feel quite good. And I think there's like a slight bend on this post here, things like that. There's not really much. There's a dent in the chassis here. Got this weirdness here with these little posts on the top, which are different. I think that's been remanufactured by someone and put on. Got a missing foot. So I want to pull this thing apart, have a look inside it. 
we'll see what's inside it for a start. It's a good exploration and see what's get, you know how's it constructed, how they've done this decade capacitor setup. And whilst it's apart, I'll try and fix this dent and fix the foot and that sort of stuff. It's a little cosmetic stuff, but say functionally it does actually work, which is always nice. Catch up the chat. USB logic and Aussie Chinese knockoffs. Okay. Now I did actually find a bug on the Siglant stuff when I was doing the decoding stuff. I show it in a video. It's coming up soon. This week I'm releasing a video on a brand new scope with Siglant's releasing. It's not in the market yet. It's the SDS 800X HD series. So Rob loaned me a, his unit to do a review on. And so this week you'll see that unit in use and I'll do some testing on it and look at the user interface, that sort of stuff. Like I always do, exactly the same process. It's quite a long video. The very first one is over an hour long and that's cut down a lot. Now I think when I first did it I actually had uh, 27 gigabytes of footage just for that part of the video. And then I actually, after that, I did a follow-up video which is a teardown and that's another five gig of footage so I've had to do a lot of editing I spent hours and hours doing that video many many hours so that's coming out this week at least the first part is the first part of the actual review and then I'll do the teardowns a separate video and I may not I don't know if I'm gonna do that next week or this week I'm not quite sure yet I might publish it on Friday instead of a repair so I might do a, a double whammy review video sort of thing you know in the same week um, it's either going to be the Cobra modification on Friday or the teardown of the Siglant scope on Friday. I'm not quite sure yet. I'm decided. Um, but when I was doing that, I did actually find a bug with the I squared C decoding. And coincidentally, someone posted on the EV blog forum about this particular bug having problems trying to do I two C decoding on their Siglant equipment. They had an SDS one one zero four XE, and they were having or was it one two zero four? Anyway, same thing. They were having issues with it, with they couldn't get it to decode. And I had just literally the day before found this bug. And um, I was able to tell them how to fix it, or work around it, I should say. So that was interesting. And so that's in the video. I don't actually, I've got it time stamped in the video as well, so you can see that bug in action. And I found a few little bugs, all, all to do with I squared C decoding, and all of them are to do with the SLA 1016. So it's not the scope itself, I don't think. I'm pretty sure the scope itself isn't where the bug is. I think the bug is with the SLA 1016. But it's only a minor bug, and if you know it's there, you can work around it. What's your do 4K videos? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> a bit different. Yeah, I'm doing 1080p. I don't do 4K. I, I don't need see the need to go to 4K, apart from the fact that when you do things like zooming in, but I've been doing that a lot recently, trying to get framing better. So in this situation, it's not too bad. But you know, I could be zoomed out too much. And I have to get it a bit bigger in screen so you can see the detail better, you know. Um, in this situation, in this situation, it's not bad. But if I was looking at something like this, I could be in this zoom level, and you go, "Oh, it's a bit small." But in that case, in when I'm doing the editing, I'm bringing it into sort of this, this sort of size. And when you do that, then obviously it goes grainy, and you lose a lot of resolution because it's obviously just blowing it up because the resolution's already maxed out. But with 4K, you can zoom in and still have good quality video. That's the only benefit. Um, Yes, it would be nice. I don't know, 2K probably be good. <laughs> Actually, to be honest, I thought this did 2K recording, but this is a 1K in video camera. <laughs> well, it's actually a camera, which I do video on, I should say. So, yeah, I don't know. Interestingly, that um, this thing here, which I've got to review, this is 4K. Or is it 2.5K or something like that? It's, it's something like that. It's, it's definitely higher anyway. Yeah, it's, it's it's just a waste of space. It's, it puts an awful lot of strain and resources, um, makes editing slower, and also your file sizes are huge compared to it, and it just slows that whole process down doing 4K. I mean, maybe you want to do it, but it depends on what you're doing. I mean, in my situation, I don't think it's appropriate. I think 1K is enough. Um, 2K, I think, would be slightly better if I could then do zooming in in editing 
to get the framing better, you know, which is what I've been doing recently. Well, more recently, I've been doing it a bit more carefully, I suppose. I've always done it, but I'm trying to do it more um, consistently, is the word I'm looking for. This isn't OnlyFans. <laughs> Pictures in high def is good, though. Yeah, yeah. That's true. Like when I did the review of the teardown of the STS 800X HD, that's not exactly roll of the tongue, was it? The um, I did actually take photos of that and put them on the EV block form, so they're on there. Um, original untouched. Well, actually, I think oh, I had to resize them to get them up there because they're too big. The original photos were about seven or eight gig each. Sorry, seven or eight meg each. And so I had to resize them or change the JPEG quality or something like to get them down to a small enough level. Better post them on a the forum. Um, yeah. Yeah, well my, my machine is not really... I mean, Macs aren't great for video editing. At least not the ones I've got. <laughs> um, and the PC seem to do encoding a lot faster. They seem to have it. Anyway. Uh, okay, let's get on with this thing. So the first thing we've got to figure out how to do is get into it. It's got screws front and back. I think I'll take the front ones off because I'm thinking this whole panel will just come out the casing. That's what I'm suspecting. So I'll take these front screws out and see what happens, see if the whole panel comes out. Um, I could be wrong about that, but let's give it a go. If not, we'll just pull some more screws out until it falls apart. Or oh, I should probably do this too. It's always a capacitor. Seeing as it is a capacitor box we're working on. If you might stick this on the back and unscrew these. Might make more sense. It's when the bolts fall out inside and it all just falls apart and goes horribly wrong. Hey, look at that. That was a good guess, wasn't it? I was right, it does just come out the front panel. Let's have a close look at this thing. Step capacitor. Right. Well, my Macs, the, my, my newest Mac is a 2013. <laughs> That's what I'm using now. Mac Pro 2013. And the one I was using before that was the 2010 Mac Pro. And to be honest, the 2010 Mac Pro is better. So I'm using the 2013. It does encode faster when I'm doing videos. It encodes quicker because it's got the dual GPU thing going on there. Um, and it's got the faster internal drive. It's got the... Um, well, the SSDs, I can't remember what format it is now, I forgot what it's called. But there's a, the SSD is much, much faster inside that 2013 machine. But the 2010 was better. It wouldn't bog down. I could have one program absolutely nailing something, and I could still use the machine. It wouldn't slow anything else down. I could just carry on using the machine as if nothing was happening in the other program, right? So it would not slow down, ever. It wouldn't slow down. It just always worked. Whereas the 2013 doesn't do that. If one program's busy, it would have sit there with a spinning beach ball of death, waiting until you finished. <laughs> yeah. It's things like that. It's like, <sighs> yeah, it's the 2013 isn't as good as 2010. You know, I would have thought it'd be better because it is faster, but it's a single processor. Whereas the 2010 is a dual processor machine, and I think because it's got dual processors. If it's busy, it will do one task in one processor, and then the other processor is still free for you to do the other stuff you want to do. And so the 2010, 
I actually actually quite miss it. Um, the the benefits of using 2013 is that it's I can use the newer version of software. Like I'm using the latest version of DaVinci Resolve, for example, things like that. So that's the benefit of using that. Because I can use the newer operating system. But even now, I can use um, Mac OS 12. Yeah, 12 was the newest I can do on that. Um, it was the 2010 version, I think it was 10.12, right? A couple of versions older. And that's causing me some problems for things. So I wanted a newer machine to run your software. But even the 2013 is too old. So, like, look at an example. Perfect example. I was looking at this thing, right? The software for this, for the Mac, requires Mac OS 13. And the most my computer can do is 12. Now, there is a workaround for that, which I may do. Um, I've forgotten what it's called now. But it allows you to install a new operating system on your machine. Then what Apple allows you to do. So it's a workaround, it's a compromise, it probably has a whole bunch of inherent bugs with that. But yeah, it's it's something I may resort to doing at some point. I might even do that on the 2010 machine, which has been sitting there idle for no, ten months now. Must be about that. Since I've got the 2013 machine. Um so yeah, let's see I might get a 2010 one which is sitting there idle, sitting there unused and maybe try doing that hack to that machine to a newer system. I'll try and get a 1013 on that one if I can, or OS 13, um, if you want to call it, and and try and bring that one up and have that one more modern. And if that works, and if that proves reliable, then I may just switch back to the old 2010 machine and live with slower video encoding. Maybe I could upgrade a graphics card and do better with that. I don't know. Anyway. How much is the latest Mac Pro? <laughs> if you have, if you have to ask, you can't afford it. <laughs> That's how it works with Mac stuff, isn't it? If you want, if you want a better one, if you want the the modern thing, if you have to ask, you can't afford it. That's what it comes down to. Um, so yeah, I'm not getting that. <laughs> as much as I'd like to get the latest Mac and actually use that and be completely up to date it's an awful lot of money and I don't think the benefits going to be that great seven thousand pounds starting and that's with a base model which has got hardly anything in it I did look at them briefly when I first came out I thought yeah that's a joke no way now no one go near that yeah. Anyway, let's get on with this thing. Getting sidetracked. So, also here's the front panel, and here's the rear. Let's have a closer look. It's got styrene caps in it. Interesting. They've got these other types. Are those micas, are they? I don't think they're micas, are they? Like some, like some, like, oh, what are they? Who know what these are? I recognise those caps. Know what they're called? Comments down below. We've got these ones here too. Some more polys. Interesting construction, isn't it? Very simple. Very tidy. Extremely tidy construction. And obviously here we've got a variable capacitor, which is what this front one is. It's a variable. Air gap. It's an air capacitor. Which is how you get these really small values. It's very nice. So basically you've got this post here goes through to this, this line, which comes along and it's in parallel with each switch. So each switch is in parallel with itself. So it's a it's a capacitor, don't forget. So capacitors work in parallel. Whereas if it was a resistor, obviously you'd be in serious. So it's capacitor, so parallel what it is. And the second post comes up, I'm trying not to touch anything in here. And does the same. Goes across and is in parallel with all the switches. And 
and then this air capacitor is actually going onto this board here. Interesting that each one has only got five capacitors for a decade. And they've got, actually got the same board used on all of them, the same circuit board on all five. Apart from this one, this one's different, I think. Yeah, the ones down this end. Oh, you can't see. So, the ones down this end are different. It's a different circuit board, but these are all exactly the same board and just populated them differently. Universal boards, nice and simple, cheap. Nice design. Yeah, it's really clean in it, it looks really good. It's nice. Now what I might do is put some oil on these switches on the actual mechanisms of them to make keep them all nice so that end up wearing away the metal. A bit of do a bit of maintenance on that. But suck it, it was working fine. I had no reason to actually do anything with it apart from just a bit of maintenance really. I mean the actual switches themselves, the contacts are working behind. I'll say it again. The contacts are working fine. There was no signs of dirty contacts when I was trying it out before. But the actual mechanisms can probably use a bit of mechanical wear and tear care, you know. Now that is actually a roller. It is a roller. That's nice. Let me show you that. It's a nice touch. So there's a the switch mechanism there, the detent. head. You can see that it's actually got a roller in there. But you can see it's slipping. See that? So it's not rolling the entire time. So it definitely needs a bit of care there. That needs a bit of a clean up, a bit of oiling. I'll probably put a bit of oil on there. Now that's actually got like a plastic housing around it. So maybe oil isn't the best choice. Obviously oil is the best for between the roller and the cam it's on, which is basically a disc with holes in it, right? That's what's doing the detents. So that's oil's best for that, but silicon's probably best for the plastic part. Hmm, which one to use? You reckon a microwave? Okay. I think I might do oil because the mechanical part there is probably more important than actual metal. I'll do a little bit of oil in there. Uh, got some somewhere. Tunisian deco box, more expensive. <laughs> yeah, the prices are quite high actually. I'm quite surprised by those things. You look at them and think, oh, okay, I'll get, you know, that looks right. But then you realize actually it's a modern Chinese device, you know, it's not quite the same thing. Let's make sure this is all good. So I decided to spray some oil in here, and because it's mostly metal mechanics, oh, that went everywhere, way more than I wanted. Bring more around. Can I get this one around as well? Try and get onto the rollers. That's better. A bit more moderate. I think it's mostly metal to metal contact, and this plastic is just a holder there. So hopefully this is okay. <laughs> um, some plastics don't like getting oily. These look like they're nylon, so they should be kind of okay. Hopefully. Or I'm just ruining it right now. Hopefully I'm not ruining it. But also I'm going to put some on the actual um, hinge points as well. Where they kind of hinge through these mechanisms. It's down there. Which you probably can't see what I'm doing. It's a bit in there too. Just trying to put the smallest little bit in there. Just to lubricate everything. In there. The 
I mean, this lasted all this time, however many years it's been. I mean, it would be nice to find a day code, I think. There may be one somewhere. Um, so I want to make sure it keeps lasting, you know, a further period of time. I'm looking after it a little bit. You know, a little bit of oil can save it an awful lot of wear. Let's just check if this is still rotating properly now or not. See if it's fixed the problem. Let's get a closer look. Which one we're we seeing? We're seeing this one here. That's not what I want to see. I want to see this one. So before this was not turning properly. It was binding halfway around. Yeah, it's looking good now. Yep, yeah, that's now turning, setting like a roller, which is what it should be doing. Great. Right, that should do that for another 20 years. Oh, what's that again? That should be good for another 20 years now, hopefully. Yeah, well, the oil was going to get in there, and the oil was going to displace silicon and stuff anyway, so it's like, it is, it is what it is. Yeah, it's going to have to do the job. It's all really small in there, so. Pre-89, you reckon? Well, the, um, I got it off eBay, which is, like, my main source. I do sometimes get things from local site. Now... Someone asked me the other day about if I had a, 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 a um, tube tester, and I don't have a tube tester. So, oh, I thought I was out of interest. I looked on eBay, I thought, 600 bucks. Yeah, no, not likely to buy one off there. And then I told my local site, Trade Me, and they have a new one. It's, it's a tube tester, 50 bucks. But great. Anyway, unfortunately, somebody else also wants it, and it's now over 250 bucks, over 250. And my bid's being exceeded. So I'm sort of debating whether or not I spend more money and try and get a tube tester or not. Um, I have almost no use for one, but there's been times when I would have liked to test a tube, and I don't have anything to test tubes. So it makes you think I should probably spend the money and get a tube tester. And it's still cheaper than eBay, right? So if I spent 400 bucks on it locally, it's still cheaper than getting one off eBay. But then you look at the circuit diagram for what they are, it's like, well, there's almost nothing in these things. <laughs> Most of it is about knowing how to set it up. <sighs> you know, is it really worth that money? I don't know. Probably not. Tube tester. Is that your tube tester? It's got all the sockets in it. So you can plug your tube in and test them all. Yeah. To buy new tubes well yeah that's what i've been doing but sometimes you think well if you're a tube which is hard to get or it's expensive then maybe you just want to know if the tube's performing properly because if it's performing properly why would you worry about it you know if the tube is within spec because it's actually a really good tube um you know i don't have many things that got tubes in it i've only got a couple of things which have tubes so 1983 with a question mark okay um, yeah, so I don't know, it's just, yeah. It just means it's bent. I'm looking at this now, I think, is this curve? It is slightly curved, look. It's got a slight curve in it. And I could tell that from here, I could see the profile very slightly off. How long am I trying to straighten it? Hell no. It's staying exactly as it is. <laughs> um, spent over a thousand pounds on the tube tester you've got. Wow. 
Ask Curious Mark. Well, I could ask Curious Mark, but yeah, I don't know. I've only got a couple of bits of gear which need it, but I mean, unfortunately, Curious Mark's in a completely wrong country. So, yeah. Now I'm looking at this handle thing, and this handle's bent inwards a little bit compared to this one. This one's straight. This one's bent inwards a little bit. Definitely is, yes. It's definitely bent inwards a little bit. See it? I'm not going to worry about straining it. It's probably bent the screw itself. Let's have a look, see if the screw comes out wonky. I should video this bit, shouldn't I? So I'm just looking at this handle over here, and it's actually not straight. So I'm just going to try unscrewing the screw and see what happens to the screw. Yep, screws, look at it, it's wobbling everywhere. This is an example of where I need to zoom in more. So here's the screw, and it's wobbling everywhere as I'm unscrewing it. This, yeah, it's it's slightly bent, isn't it? You think it's all right or not? You reckon? Yeah. It's fine, look, nothing wrong with that. They make them that way, don't they? Hmm. <laughs> I, um, I wonder if I should change these screws before they snap. How many wizards do you have to buy to get 10 perfectly matched ones? I don't know. Actually, modern resistors are pretty pretty close. The ones I've tried have actually been alright. I've got oil on my desk now, I need to clean this up. I think I sprayed it too much on all these switches. It was the very first one I did, but it came out too much. Get with that. Maybe wants an audio desk. Yeah, Avo valve characteristic meter mark three for free. Nice. Needs to go on a screw straightener. Yeah. Thing is, chances are it won't straighten, it'll just snap. I did get some Imperial screws. They're not in here. They're out in the garage. <laughs> I bought some sets, which I would have shown in the mailbag. Um, I'm pretty sure they're not here. Yeah, they're out in the garage. They're larger sizes, I think. I don't know. Did I put them out there? Hold on. Let me see if I can find them. They're not there. They may be in my hobby box in my book. I thought I'd be using them in here, so I thought I probably would have kept them in here. It's all metric. No. No, I think I must have taken them outside and put them in the garage. Yeah. I did put them out there. So I could actually replace that screw and get the handle straight. Well, the pair of screws. Miss Stiff, I'm just bought me a coffee. Which is good because I need one. Brilliant. Uh, I think I might put it back together for now and just. She's gone again now. I think it's metric. It looks too coarse a thread. It looks like a UNC or something. 
I'm pretty sure it's not metric. I'll check. Oh, I dropped one in the recycling bin. Oh, that's how it's screwed. Um, Maybe it is. I just found some screws which appear to be the same size. I was assuming it is Imperial because it looks a bit coarse. It goes in. I wonder how deep the threads are. I think that's it. Not quite deep enough for this bolt. <laughs> Tim Tams. Yes, we get Tim Tams here. And yes, I know that's the thing the way of eating it, but they melt way too quickly and no. It is a thing, but no. It's just it's more of a gimmick than anything else. I think it's more of a marketing stunt. Right, what's this one? Is this one going to do it? That might be the right size. I might have a couple of those if I'm lucky. That's the right size. But it's a bit short. At least something between the two. And I put all my bits and pieces, my, my bolt sets, they're all out in the garage and the ones I've got in that hardware box here that's all like smaller stuff I don't think I've got anything this size in there Shorter. I just need it literally to be a couple more shorter. No, it's exactly the same length. Yeah. I'll double check my hardware box. I was assuming these were not there. Let me check. Let me see if I've got one which is this size. I may do. No, they're way too small. Too small. Nope. 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 No, I put them out in the garage. Those I had some kits in here for ages, right? Some like assortment sets, and I had them on the other side of the room there by my 3D printer, and I hadn't touched them since I put them there. I thought oh, I'm going to put those in the garage because I don't tend to use them very often anyway. Obviously, because I haven't used them, and thought I'll put them out there because I'm not going to need them unless I need them. <laughs> anyway, now I need them. Yeah, that was only like a couple of weeks ago. I put those out there. Of course, now I've moved them. I need them. So I shall pop outside very quickly and see if I can find the right bolts to replace these with. I'll be right back.
Okay, found a box. Bolts will be found. They are M4, for those that want to know. Damn it, Ian. <laughs> right, unfortunately, these are hexagonal hex, hex bolts, right? So they're not quite the same, but it should do the job. It's certainly better than bent ones. And they're about the same length as the original as well. So. Basically the same. Should record some video on this, shouldn't I? So I just went and found some more bolts for these. These are M4s. Uh, I'm not sure what length they are. I don't know. I, should, I could have measured it, but I can't bother. And that will fit in there quite nicely. That's all good now. That was all bent before, so no, it's not bent. I've got to change the bottom one as well. See, these are hexagonal instead of a slot, so it's not quite original. It doesn't quite match original, but it'll have to do. It's better than having a knob which is bent and potentially going to fall off because the screws have been stressed. I'll try and get this one out. Swap this one too. Then I've got the, um, I'll get my hexagonal driver out and tighten them up. I'm going to try getting this one out. It's bending because it bends in the, within the hole. It doesn't want to bend that much. This one's bent worse, I think. Yeah, much more. Bit more of an acute angle on that one. That's pretty bad. Right. At least this hand will be straight. Sorry, you're casing apart, you don't fix that dent in the foot. Driver. So if it's a four mil thread, or we need a three mil driver. Three mil. All right, that's now straight. Lovely. Oh, right. Oh, yes, big Clive will start streaming now. Shouldn't the screws be flat here to be pre cracked? Yes, they should. I don't have any, so it's not going to be pre correct. It's going to be customized. Is that what I'm looking for? Customized. <laughs> anyway, that's better. So that's done. Um, I'm happy with that now. That's definitely straight now. Great. So now I'm going to look at the casing. How does this come apart? It has clips. Oh, yay. It's all clipped together. Well, that's a pain. Oh, wow. <laughs> okay. So I'm looking to see how to get the casing apart to see how to fix this 
awful dent on it. And the actual top is stoved in very slightly as well. It's like caved in. You can kind of see it's caved in here a little bit. Um, but it's held together by clips. So it looks like I've got to take all these clips off to get it apart. Um, I don't know, how is that? It's, uh, 5, 10, 14 clips, I think, to get the top cover off. That's what it looks like. That's fun. Uh, let's see if I can get these out. They might be easy, but they won't. These are the types to dig in. Mm. Hmm. It's moving. That's something. Okay, they will move. I think once you get them started, they're all right. Was they dig into the metal and then they will tend to fold themselves over and then like ruin themselves basically. I actually recently dealt with a very similar clip to this. They look very similar on the um, motorhome on the Toyota Coaster, which I repaired recently. These same clips are used to help hold the windows in. <laughs> they look very similar. What I actually found is that my um, Leatherman tool was really good for getting these clips off because I could literally leave underneath the edge, I could get underneath one edge of them and just lever it out and it it hooked in. I'll, I'll show you the tool I used because it's hard to access as well. So I actually got this tool here, the hook, and stuck it underneath it. So I'll try and demonstrate I'll come on one of these and I can just lever it out. I can get one which is that far enough to be able to do it. No, I can't. Maybe this one. Yeah, not quite. But on that, on that situation, I could get underneath them a lot easier. There's actually gaps. I'll hook it under there, and I could just lever it and actually just pop the whole thing out. I was worried about it snapping it again. I've snapped it once before. That's why it's a different colour. Had to replace it once already. Should probably record some video on this. Am I even focused? Yeah, ish. Well, I suppose I'll just show you how to get these clips off. So I've leave it out on this edge here to get it moving. And then I've got a, now I've got a gap down the back. So I'll drive down the back of that and leave it out. And I'm trying to spin it rather than drag because I'm trying to reduce the chance of damaging the little pins on here which lock in. So there's so little fingers there which lock in. I'm trying to not damage those if I can. All right, so that's why I'm trying to spin it. One anything else, so it's good with a sideways movement on a pulling movement. That's the target, anyway, to try and reduce the chance of damaging them so they still work when I put it back together again. I don't know, only about 50 more to go. Yeah, I mean, they're really good clips for assembly. I mean, they're really fast to use. You push them on, you're done, you know. And they are effective, obviously. It's, it's been working this way just fine for many, many years. and hasn't come apart. So they work well. You certainly see why people use them. But it's just a bit annoying for me right now. Because I'd rather have some screws to undo. <laughs> I mean, these aren't really meant to come apart, you know. They just sort of assemble once and that's it. It's done. That's not really how this has worked. Now I think this casing is also inside the lip in here. So I'll try and get it so you can see what I'm talking about. So I think the casing on the back here, like this, it's got its lip. I think I need to actually dismantle both sides and pull one half off completely. Um, Yeah, 
if I uh, I'm still going to do this now because if I if I did like a mirror right? so if I did like a mirror so if I unhooked say this half right so th that side there and then this side here I could pull it off with the front panels on one half and the other half that might mean I have to pull off less clips maybe what do you reckon because otherwise I've still got to pull off all the clips on one side and then half the clips on one side so I've pull off more clips but if I mirror it I've got to cut off I'll pull off less I should record that video that's being clever I should capture that so because this has got these bezels on the front which are actually recessed and the casing goes into them both sides it's like a lip it goes inside to get this out I can't just undo the clips from both sides and then lift it off it doesn't work like that I have to separate them as well which means I have to also then take off the clips on one of the bottom halves so I'm thinking the best way of doing it is actually to try and mirror it so I've done all the top side here I also got to do the ones that go down as joins down here in the centers on both sides but if I then take this rear panel off here and do the bottom one this side it will be like a mirror effect I'm going to take each half apart from each other with a bezel on each half and that way I've actually got to take off lift clips stop procrastinating I'm not procrastinating I'm being I'm, being, I'm finding a shortcut <laughs> I'm finding an easier way. <laughs> and you're probably right, I'm gonna, I'm gonna end up wasting my time with this most likely. Yeah, you're probably right about that. Why is it not unscrewing? Is there a bolt in there? Is that a nut? There's a nut on the other side. One side was captive, one side wasn't. Oh, that's annoying. No, need not driver. What size they are? It's that size. That's good. Of course, they've got to try and get them back back together again afterwards. Oh, for God's sake! Nah, maybe I won't do it that way. Maybe I won't do it that way. Do that back up again. Make sure this one's tight as well. It's going to be a pain because now I've got to do all these bolts, which are going to be more annoying to deal with. Because now I've got to try and bolt these back up again afterwards. So that's actually worse, not better. If these were captive nuts like they're on the front, it'd be easy. They're not, so it's not. Oh, a minute. I have to undo them anyway to get the casing off. <laughs> oh, jeez. Okay. I have to undo one of them. Well, two of them. Casing is attached to it, so therefore, I have to do this. Okay. Yeah, fine, I'll take the whole bloody thing apart. <laughs> yeah, the little feet are correct. 
This pulley wire is a bit loose. Nylon does track, he goes brittle over time. Here's nylon feed. What it is, because nylon is polymerized in water and it makes it interesting. Stuff fell out and stuff didn't fall out. What? Oh, it's a space. Oh, there's spaces in there too. Oh, God, as it gets worse and worse. Never ending again. It's about to get again. It's gonna be a nightmare, I think. Anyway, it's also this massive case, and it doesn't need to be this big either. Right, well, get this pet panel off. Oh, there's bits falling off everywhere now. Washers. Okay, the washer was on the inside. Three of them are still stuck. Alright, that's where they came from. All this to try and fix a dent. <laughs> Jeez. Oh, I've got to fix the feet anyway. This front foot is naked. So that's that bit. Um, <laughs> This is just anyway, move on. Yeah. Yes, and I'm probably blocking the camera. This whole thing's gonna be pain, isn't it? I know it's gonna be pain. Come on, pop out. Oh, these middle ones gonna be awkward. Jeez, this is really worth the effort. If I just turn it upside down, would that be alright? <laughs> Let's put the front panel back in upside down. That'd be fine, wouldn't it? Yeah. This one's being awkward down here. It'd be hard to get to. Camera's gonna shut off in a second, I reckon. Ah, dear. So many bloody clips. <laughs> Why couldn't I just put some four screws in it? You know? They could have just put like four bolts between each side and just done. No. You could have used the front panel bezel, hold it together. No. It made everything awkward. Right. Wasn't designed to come apart. As simple as that. No, the, the, the intention was that it's built. That's it. It's done. Don't have to fuck with it anymore. I should probably not use that language on YouTube. <clears throat> Don't have to mess around with it anymore. So you know, that's it. It's done. No, no, no. Anyway. Two clips in the middle, which I'm having trouble getting off. No, that was good. Come on, give me some room. Here we go. Starting to go now. It's not particularly tight. We're all nearly halfway there. <laughs> uh, 
let's take these ones off here You know just how, as I'm going along, getting less and less careful with it. <laughs> yeah. Oh, lost that one. It's on the floor doom now. Okay. Now, does my theory work about getting these two holes apart like that? So when I find out my theory is wrong, it doesn't work. I should record this. So I'm the truth, does it come apart? It does, look at that. That is an awful lot of effort. Way more effort than I want it to be. But we got there. Okay, now we can get the dent out. Where's my little hammer? Oh, interesting. So that um, post thing, which is different up here, got a plastic one here, metal one here. I thought that was like someone's made one to replace the plastic one which is missing, but no, that's not the case. It's actually built in. It's a holder for this nut. So why has that one got a holder for the nut? And this one doesn't have a holder for the nut in the same way. Strange. Why do one side different to the other? That's weird. You can't do it the same, wouldn't you? Anyway, lock your ears up. My nut fell off. Wash us. Do you want a grounding nut? Uh, maybe. I mean, it doesn't say that. There's nothing attached to the outside as an old way of grounding it. Okay, now we've got to get into this corner. Put your paint flaking off. It's working. Not well, but it's working. Really, this is kind of in the way. It's not quite the angle I need. It needs to be a bit longer. I can't get any the other way. That's all good. Definitely got a contract in that corner now, but that's not quite the right shape to get in there. If it didn't have the handle on it, it might be right. And there's not much holding it together anyway. No, there's like a shard of metal in there. There you go.
It's slowly getting there. Panel bit is not exactly exciting, now, is it? It's just bloody noisy. <laughs> it's getting there. It's working. Flat level, I think again. Right. No, that's not really what I want there. Right. Renovation noises, check. Yeah. <laughs> Getting hammered, check. Can't quite get where I want to get there. I wonder if I can use this. No, not quite. Um, yeah. So do this way carefully, I suppose. Yeah, this is really wanted to cooperate very well. Problem with this, it's a very thick chassis. And this hammer's quite light. Oh, Adam's going. Thanks for dropping by, Adam. Catch you later. Well, it's still better than it was. <laughs> I still wouldn't be happy with that if I stopped there. Really, I need a slightly heavy hammer. not really putting the right corner into that. I mean, it is putting a corner in but it's not really doing the corner I need. Close. It's close. It's still not as good as original, obviously, but it's getting there. I will use this now actually. That will get to where I want it.
All right. Apart from the corner part, what do you reckon? Ignore the, the crappy paint on the corner. What do you reckon? Do you reckon that's flat? Maybe. It's kind of flat, isn't it? Not quite perfect there. It's getting there. Bigger hammer. <laughs> no, I like to use small hammers because then you can do it carefully. And I'd rather take twice as long to do it using a small hammer than have one big hammer do it wrong. <laughs> yeah, it's not too bad. I've just got this little edge down here, which I think I can probably do like that to get that straight because that's definitely not straight right now. All right. That's now almost right. Okay, I'm actually happy enough with that to stop. Show about the paint, but happy enough with that to stop. I'm happy with that. That is much better. It's basically straight now. Get the light on it, maybe you see it. A tiny little high spot just here somewhere I think just a little bit but it's good enough I'm gonna stop there still way better than it was before it was all caved in um, okay so that's a bit so that's the top part we're done now we need to look at doing the feet fixing that fit which is broken or missing I may even replace these ones on the back all these ones are all split and stuff these are all old I mean I don't know does it even need them on there I don't know. I don't know, I have to look see if I can replace them potentially. I've got stuff here I could potentially replace them with. So, so look at these. So that's split, that's split. That one is not split yet. So all these feet need replacing. I should probably mention that on video, shouldn't I? So now looking at these feet, the top cover's done, that's as straight as I'm going to get it, it's pretty. I'm happy, pretty happy with it. Shame about the paint, you know, on that corner being damaged, but that's all there is. But these all split, these feet, so that's split. This one's split, this one's split as well. well I saw that one's not split. Just these two are split. Obviously, this one had split because that's why it's gone. I've got some feet here somewhere, I need to go and check them. Worst case, if I don't have ones which fit properly, I could always 3D print some. It's not a big deal. I've done that before, 3D printed feet. So I've already got a design I could use actually. But I'm pretty sure I've got some feet. I asked, um, Let's find them. Okay. Back to the hardware bin. I should just leave this in here, shouldn't I? Lots of glands. I've got some pushing rubber feet. I don't think they're thick enough though. I think the hole's too small for the push part. So not those ones. This is what happens with all the stuff in mailbags. It ends up in these bins like this, which are overflowing. Right, we've got some selection of feet here. Look potentially promising. They're high enough. What have I got? Sure, I've got some other ones as well. Stuffed in here somewhere. 
maybe. Some knobs, it's not looking for right now. Right, well, that's what I've got, is that lot there? So, so these are the feet I have. I should definitely get some more of these. So, that'll work. Four of those. Hopefully, the hole's big enough inside them. These are rubberized feet as well. Definitely need to get some more of these. And I've also got these other types, smaller ones, which I might be able to use on the rear panel to replace these original rear ones. Um, now these, yeah, those go through. These are all four mil screws, I think. Yeah, that'll go through there. But I've got these other ones, which are taller. S screws won't go through them. Uh, oh, this one, is that any different? Uh, maybe it will. It's like a it is rubber. It's just rubber in the way, stopping those. So that might work. I could probably replace those as well. Do I really need to? I don't know. They all split a little bit, but they're not missing. They are a pain to replace, though. Well, a pain to replace later on. I think I might. Yeah, I think I will replace them. I will change them. So let's swap those out as well. I need to get some more. Um, yeah, it's got two different sizes here too. Make sure I don't get the wrong ones. There's an error. Yeah, right. Okay. Definitely gotta get some more of these. They're really handy. Oh, well, I've got five. I need four. Can't count. Four. So there's the feet we need. Let's take these apart and put new feet on. Right. So I've got some feet, I've got some smaller ones to go on the rear, which are for these ones which are splitting and breaking. They're not broken yet, they're still intact, but I couldn't replace them. And I've got these ones to put on the bottom. So, we've got feet. Need to buy some more now. Yeah, they're all rubberized feet, they've all got rubber with a, a washer insert in there. There's like a washer inside there as well. And they're quite, I don't know, I think they're rubber, I think they're probably plasticized PVC. They, they are flexible. I'm not quite sure what they are actually. It might be a urethane of some kind. Let's use the right screwdriver. And the nut driver, which is probably the same one. It is. Here was washers falling out everywhere. <laughs> they use a lot of washers on these. And it's also got this little, because it's a tapered screw. I don't know if I can use the originals on these or not. I don't think I can. We'll try. No, it's going to be too short. So let's take the original washer off this. I might have to replace these bloody screws as well. Because they're countersunk screws. Oh, what's going on? Hear yeah, about this whole getting in shot thing again, eh? Let's just do this. So, so changing the feet doesn't affect the calibration. Yeah, we have to be care careful about this calibrated feet. You have to make sure you use the right ones. Yeah, is that to make sure you use calibrated feet? Get in there. Where's the slot? Where's the slot? Here we go. Here's the slot. There's not much meat left on that for getting the washers and stuff on. Now I know you can't see what I'm doing. It's because otherwise I can't see what I'm doing. It's only just going in there. Right. 
I think it will work though. Yes, yeah, in the nut about halfway. Barely. Okay. That's actually squashing that too much. See it deforming too much. Maybe right. Okay, do that. Okay, that's one. Do you reckon this one's enough or do you have to do all four? Making a mould? Well, I mean, these are nylon feet, right? These are just nylon. So, yeah. I wouldn't really go there myself. It's not worth the effort, it's just feet. I think part of the problem with these is that because they use tapered screws, countersunk screws is tending to split them. That's what countersunk does. It tends to split stuff. And here I am using them again. Great for centering, not so good for stress. You get in a slot, which is just be a divvy. This is taking way longer to work than I thought it was going to. Two done. Like I said, I could always just like 3D print if I really wanted to, but don't really see the point. Not in this case, I've got parts I can use. I mean, really, I should be changing these screws to be flathead type so they're not stressing the rubbers. I think it'd be alright. Get away with it. This and this side. Ugh. Now I'm doing it backwards, you see. It's a bit awkward. I'm not sure I'm in the slot yet. Okay, last one. Well, last one of these ones. <laughs> I actually think the ones that do the back are going to be harder because it's shrunk around the uh, shaft of the threads, of the actual bolts, so I think they're going to be hard to sort out. And that spring wash is awfully expanded. Look at that. It's all opened up. Let's fix that. So I could just leave it out. Fix. Do it. Goes on this side, you idiot. <laughs> hmm. Okay. 
Right, bottom feet on. Does it wobble? No. Yay. <laughs> right, video. Right, so that's bottom feet replaced. That's all those on there now. And it doesn't wobble, which is the important thing. Wobbling is always really annoying. If it wobbles, it means the chassis is bent, which is also possible. I've come across that plenty of times. In fact, I can see a bend in the chassis. It isn't wobbling though. Oh, maybe very slightly. I see a very slight bend in the chassis over here. Hey, Greg. Nothing a bit of hammering can't fix. That's better. All right, that was easy the last time. So that's that bit. I think, therefore I am, is that what it says? No. Um, we put this back together now. Yeah. Easy, simply. <laughs> okay. Clips back on here. there as well Let's put them here yeah great pushing it back on again is going to be fun oh, come on it's got something which I'm not going to cut myself with Probably even use that curve on there to help push them on. Oh, come on! I would have thought putting the clips back on again with the hard bit. <laughs> I think once I get one on, it will close up a little bit. There we go. There's one half on. We'll close it up, and it will make it easier. Why did it go so horribly wrong? Why are there different clips? Should I check for different clips now? I wouldn't think there would be. They all look exactly the same to me. No, no, there is wide and narrow. There are two different types. Great. <laughs> right, so the narrow ones obviously between the joins in here. I should definitely call that in video. So I'm trying to put it back together and trying to figure out why I'm in trouble getting these clips on. Turns out it's two different types of clip, which I had noticed. There's a wide one and a narrow one. See the difference there? So the wide ones off the face here, narrow ones will be down for the sides. Yeah. That's better.
what happened, I think I was getting right to the back, I get all these clips in the front, I'll turn it around the other way and I'll find the back end is not seated in properly. What do you reckon the chances are of that happening? Anyone want to take any bets on that? Nearly there. We can move this piece of equipment to one side then after that and do something else. I might have put those back feet on this one yet. Get in. Come on, this one's been awkward. Bend it slightly. Here we go. Oh, that's right. I've got to get these spaces in everything. Oh. <laughs> okay. How hard is it to get these screws out of there? We'll even go through these, will I? We'll go through those. You tend to be lazy and not to replace them. Because this is being. I think that's over molded. Yeah. So this one looks like it's over molded because it's actually around the thread. See that? It's almost like it's been molded on. Almost. I don't know. It could just be it's melted slightly. When they pushed it in, maybe when they pushed it, it's dragged it through. Pull this one out. So I'm just split, which is coming off easy. We'll start with the one just split, shall we? Actually, there's another one that's split, I can say. We'll start with those ones. Put them through here. Which is also going to be fun. Be back in ten minutes. <laughs> Did I space those evenly? Well, ish. I was, I was yeah, no, it's gonna throw a calibration out, they're not in exactly the right places, eh? <laughs> It'll change the case resonance. Imagine what crap I could make up and everyone would believe us. I could do YouTube videos about complete bullshit and people would believe it. Actually, people do believe it. That's the problem. You could say all these stupid things, which people, would, you know, sensible people would actually realise is complete rubbish. And then you sort of people would buy into it and go, oh, no, it's a thing. You have to make sure the clip's in the right places and on, on the same, which doesn't actually you know, matter. Obviously, there will be busy gear where it does matter, but in this case, it doesn't matter. Ah, oh, dear. Trying to get this thing threaded through here because I can't push it. Wow. Yeah, tedious. Tedious work. I hope these bolts are long enough. After all this. Alright, that's one in. Let's try mounting it and see what actually happens. Do you think which way up it goes, Maz? That's right, we need the spacers in there too. Bloody spacers. <sighs> you think it's all your thing? Yeah. Come on, spacer, get in there. This is awkward. I'm trying to get my hand in there to get the spacer in. Okay. 
this let's use a different approach that's going to be awkward to do right so let's do this differently stick the screw through there stick the spacer on there sit on the bench let's do another one if I can get the thing out come on of course I could just cut it because it broke anyway but yeah you never know I might find a piece of gear one day it's got one of these on it which just needs one and if I've got some which aren't cracked then I'll, I'll keep them might be useful as a repair for something later on you never know The paint being flaked away could fit calibration. Well, that's certainly true. Yeah, yeah. It affects your shielding. No, it's cheating. Yeah. <laughs> working smarter, not harder. If I was working smarter, I wouldn't have touched this bloody thing in the first place. <laughs> uh, might help with your thing. Yeah, yeah. Come on. Wish I could just push this down. Come on, push. No, that ain't gonna work. Jeez. I'll get this thing done eventually. Anyway, no, it's alright. All we've got to do is get these four bolts in and then put the front panel back on again, we're done. And then um, we can do something else. So I've got this other capacitance standard, which I want to do a video about as well, which is quite big and bulky. And I showed it in mailbag and I, I did find a fault with it at the time. I did actually pull it apart and find what was wrong with it. I think I might have accidentally fixed it. I'm not quite sure. Um, I moved something and I think it fixed it. <laughs> but I want to have that on video. It still needs work. Oh, damn it. <laughs> Working smarter than me. Yeah. Smarter. That's uh, yeah, smarter. All right. Spin it around. Power screwdriver. Well, I think it's with this, I'm probably going to shove the thing into my fingers. Um, that's more likely what's going to happen. Come on, come off. This one's not cracked. I'm trying not to mess this one up. Like I said, if I've got one which I can use later on for something else, that'd be good. These bolts are bloody long. I could have made this differently, couldn't they? Right. Oh no, now I've lost the bolt. I keep meaning to do a shirt for the floor of doom. Because if you drop something small on my floor, it disappears. It's like almost impossible to find it again. Ouch. Yeah, that's not working. I'm just trying to get it in to start with, so I'm screwed in. Yeah, it's going. Great. <sighs> this is tedious. Who thought it would take longer to put the feet on than anything else? <laughs> anyway, that's alright. Should be cause a video about this. So I'm replacing his feet on the back right now, and the weirdest bit about this is trying to get the bolts through the things. They fit, but they're tight, and you got to get them out the old ones first, and then screw them into the new ones. And it's a really long bolt; and it's taking forever. And then I've got spaces off to put on. So this, so I go through there, and I'm trying to be clever about this. I put the spacer on here. I'm gonna do it with all four. I can sit the chassis on top of it instead of trying to put each bolt in a line of spacers, get the washers on. I can put the whole thing in one go, hopefully, it might work. And then I just got to put the washers on and put the nuts on and, and I'll do it up. And hopefully it'll work. Um, I could be proved wrong. But the hardest bit is like these things because these are just a pain. Undo that thing and put it in the next one. Do it back up again. Because the holes are the same size as the threads. Can't actually just pull them off. Right. 
my hands are getting sore now from all this bloody twiddling. Right, last one. Any day now, we'll be finished any day now. Anyway, but I do like to restore bits of pig gear like this, and I like to bring it back and have it all nice and do it up. The paint side is something I don't tend to touch. If it's got damaged paint like this is now, because obviously the the damage on the front or on the um, the dent ahead on it, and the subsequent re-damaging for me bending it back. Um, you know, the flaking paint is something I don't tend to do. It's not often I I actually pull something apart to the point of repainting it. I mean, obviously on this, I could have done that. I could have sanded it back, got it all nice and smooth, then painted it and had it nice. But then you've got to try and get a colour match. And I'm rubbish at that. Or you paint the whole thing. And I'm rubbish at that too. I'm not good at painting. And by the time I've got it back together again, I'll probably scratch half the paint off. So I tend to not do paint. Paint is not my strong point. Ask my wife. Painting is not my strong point. <laughs> Right, that's the spacers on. Right, that's all the spacers fitted on. Let's see if my theory is correct that I can just get this and drop it on and have it fit. Right, let's put the bolts in. Until I lifted it up. There you go, right. Let's put the other washer on. It's got another washer which needs to drop in, which is here somewhere. There it is. Then these little lock washers. Put these on, and then I can get in here with the driver, the driver, and do them up, and we should be good. I think I should do one end at once. You reckon? Maybe. Let's get the nuts on at least, don't fall apart. I suppose this is the benefit now of where the things are locked into the feet and they're being hard, you know, stiff in the feet. It means the feet won't turn when I'm trying to put the nuts on. So I can actually assemble it without it falling apart and just turning inside the foot. That's actually something to my benefit. Makes it less annoying now. What is annoying is I can't get this nut on. Here we go. Right. So it's that end started. Now I can spin it around to the other end. Actually, I might do it right-handed instead of left-handed. Might be a better idea. So what happens is I get all this done and I go, "Oh, I've got one washer left over. Where's that from? Where's that washer from?" You know, I'm joking about that, eh? But I have one washer left over. Where's that from? <laughs> there must be an extra one at some point. That's what, that's what it is. They, they put too many on the factory, that's the problem. It wasn't, it wasn't that I've, lost, I've missed one somewhere. No. Well, I think so anyway. Okay. We can stand this up now. Yay. So it looks a lot better with his feet on it. Might, might not even need to use a screwdriver. Done well enough, I reckon. Maybe too much actually. So the other thing I might do is go around with some sealant or Loctite or some kind of thing and just dip it on the screws, on the heads of the screws, so if the nuts one back off. Here 
we go. So, it's not too bad, you've only... I've got this metal splinter. I keep feeling it poking my finger. I hate that. I hate metal splinters. Um, so I've got a hammer, which we need to reassemble. You have a random washer. All right. Um, what was I going to do? Oh yeah, it's going to um, put some sealant on these to try and stop them from backing off. Get some Loctite. I probably should have put it on before I put the nuts on, really, eh? To lock the nuts in place, but I think dipping on the end of the fridge is probably enough. So. Loctite. Stick some of this on. I should do some video too, should I? You will fall over then. Right, so I'm going to put some Noctite on these now. I've already put the, the back feet on, all the back feet on in now, all attached. That's all worked. So I'm going to put this on. What I really should have done is put some of this on before I put the nuts on, if I was being sensible. But what I'm going to do, because the threads are actually sticking out, I don't even see it in there, you probably can't see it. But the threads are sticking out on those nuts. Try and get closer. There you go. See the thread sticking out there. So I'm going to put some on those and that will hold them in. Now, unfortunately, the ones for the feet, the bottom feet, they don't have that luxury. They're a bit short, really. But I couldn't really do much more. Hopefully, I'll get down there and lock them so they don't fall off. So, get that on there. I mean, the chance of these coming loose anyway is not exactly high, but you don't want it falling apart inside the casing and rattling around and causing problems later on, so it's just a bit of insurance. Of course, if anyone has to try to get this thing apart in the future, it could have a bit of a problem, but uh, hopefully that's not me. Well, it probably will be me. <laughs> hopefully I don't have that problem. Hopefully I don't have to pull this apart again. on these ones also running down the side to help attach it to the chassis as well just in case the nut does not stick to the thread because so really you should put this on the threads before you put the nut on and that's not what I've done so now I'm going to leave that there to let it drip, run back into the casing. And uh, I'll leave it there for a second, let it all run in, maybe. We can put the front panel back on whilst it's like this. And I think we're just about done with this unit then. Ouch. Freaking metal splinter somewhere. That is going to bug me. I need to do something about that. Dust off the microscope. Can I find it? Yeah. Where is the bastard? Can't see it. No, nah, it'll turn up eventually. Also, I locked up the switches. I'm going to be turning it. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. If you want to fix the value into zero.
20k. Now, should we put this upside down or we can or should we just put it in the right way up? Which way you reckon should do it? Do you know that thing's bowed, right? Remember I said before it being slightly curved? I can actually see here and in the opposite side. See how it's bowed? The actual connection there? This bit? Is that because that is actually bent? And it should be pulled back out again. Or should I just leave it the best alone? Just the best to leave the thing alone. <laughs> I mean, this one's not bowed as much as the other side. I think I'll leave it alone. I'm just risking damaging it, aren't I? Me and my perfectionist tendencies. Put this thing back in again now. Slide it in, and we get the original screws. Not going to do it up until I actually get the thing fully in. It's always the way you do this thing is you uh, get the things partially in there. Actually, I'll stick on its back, it goes a lot better that way. You certainly feel taller. Try to screw here and do it. And I just pushed it into my finger some more. <laughs> and like this. Now, when I was looking at this thing before, I don't know if people mentioned it on camera or not, but it looks like it's bowed, and I can actually see it now. This is bowed. You can just see it against the chassis, whereas this end is, you know, you see it's in a gap there and a blank at the back. You come across, it comes up proud. And goes back down again on that side, which you can't quite see because I'm out of shot. Here we go, just over there. So you can push this. Yeah, crumb. Okay, so it's pushing down. So it's definitely bowed slightly. It's not enough to worry bother me that much. It's just a minor thing. Anyway, that's there. It doesn't wobble. No, that's all right. And back feet don't wobble. camera shot. Alright, so that's not wobbling, that's all good. That way only wobbles back to the front, that's fine. It's all straight, the chassis is all straight. That's straight a lot better than it was before. Um, it's not perfect but it's way better than it was. I'll try and get a better shot of that, can I? See if all that's all bent in, caved in. Now look at that, it's looking much better. The corner's not perfect, but it's not bad. Bad for someone that's not a panel beater. Okay. So there you go, that's that done. I'm happy with that. That's that piece of equipment refurbished to a point where I'm happy with it. I mean, it's just new feet really, it's what we did and panel beat a little bit. I know it works. Um, at least now I've lubricated the switches a little bit, you know, the actual me mechanical part of the switch. The contacts were fine, I had no issues with contacts, so I wasn't at all worried about doing those. Um, I'm perfectly happy with the contacts as they are. So, that's good, I'm happy with that. Um, I can decide what I'll do this. I mean, I'd like to have this in this room as one of my bits of test gear I have in this room for doing um, checks and things. 
Uh, I haven't checked the accuracy of these yet, like I said before, I'm going to sit down and actually check the accuracy of each um, digit and each decimal so I know what they're actually like. Um, I've verified they actually do work, but accuracy I need to check and see how much I can use this as a reference standard, really. Whether I can do that as a reference or not, I don't know. Um, I do have another piece of gear which is supposed to be a reference standard, but um, that's what I want to work on next, if I can. But this is a nice compact unit, so I'd like to actually have this in here as something I can use. It's pretty good. It's nice. It's a very nice piece of gear. Anyway, thanks for watching. Subscribe up there if you're not already subscribed. Patreon support link over there if you want to help me to buy a piece of gear like this to fix, well, more complicated piece of gear than this to fix. I don't know. And other links down there for other stuff you can watch. Other videos, stuff in the description, playlists, what have you, electronics repair, reviews, whatever. Yeah. Here's low. Right, that's that one done. Um, can I test it? Is it calibrated right away? Yes. Um, it does need clean as well. Obviously, it's clean up. It's got some grime stuff on it, which needs cleaning up. Um, yeah, let's have a look at the camera. Oh, let's get the DR so you can see it on the camera, right? It'll be a bit easier. Um, DR. I'm going to have a quick look at it. Sure, the battery still works. I haven't used this in a little while. Let's do 100 hertz. Yeah, have a quick look. I'm not going to get into too much detail on this. Obviously, I've already done that in my bag and covered it a bit. Um, should I do a calibration on this thing? I've done a calibration in a while. Open. What's an open? Open first. Fine, we do an open. Now I've got to wait for 30 seconds. It does need a clean up. I mean, it's a bit of grime that is clean. I'll do it later on. Also, you're not interested in that on camera. I definitely have a splinter in this finger somewhere. Probably a bit of aluminium splinter. I'll try and find it later on. Great. Should we get that? Then we'll check it and see how accurate it actually is. I suppose. I mean, could we do the whole thing? You're going to be bored with that or not? It's only 10 decades in each one. I'm not going to check. 50,000 of them. <laughs> Gonna do 10, 10, 10, 10. Well, it's actually 9. It's 9, 9, 9, 9, 10. So it's not that bad. Pass. Great. Stick it in there. Stick it in there. One pick for it. 49 pick for it. I get mine. Um, relative that? No, I can't relative that. Oh, that's rubbish. Okay, well, remember, the 49 pick of is out. 150. That's perfect. 248. Which is going to be faster. 350. Is that being a question? Or is it just a sampling? Sampling. This is updating awfully slowly. It's probably because of the frequency. 450. Fine. It might get better as I do bigger values. 550. Yeah. Those are all looking pretty good. 653. Let's check in this switch actually. Yeah, that's all looking right. 750. 850. 
How old is this thing? Um, good question. It's it's old. It's 80s probably, maybe 70s. It's a 950. That's all good. They're all basically bang on. There's a couple of a few picofarads out. A couple of picofarads. That's pretty good. So this is one nanofarads now. So that's 10 out. Okay, that's not bad. Hoping this updates faster soon. I'm not sure there is a switch issue or not actually now. Not sure. Is there a switch issue? That's fine. Okay, that's slightly out that one. So that's four, four, one, yeah. Five is up slightly. This is getting faster now, that's good. So it's up by about 100. So it's up by about 100 because these are in a parallel configuration. If one capacitor is wrong, it will throw the whole lot out. So we need to look at which one was wrong by 100. Let's try and find that. So those are right. So one and two, let's check one. So one's okay, it's up very slightly. Two, will be two as well. That's also up very slightly. Three, is okay, which is a combination of one and two. Four, which we want by itself, is up by 100. So four seems to be one which is out the most. And five, you one by itself, I think. Maybe, maybe it's five which is one by itself. Anyway, yeah, so there's a slight error there. Okay, next one, 10 nanofarad. It's not bad. 20 is looking really good. 30 is up slightly. 40 is looking really good. 50 is perfect. 60 is up slightly. I mean, if I really wanted to, I could probably pull this apart and tweak the capacity values, replace some parts or something, get these really good. But these are, I think, adequate most things anyway. For the stuff I do, I think this is probably fine. 100 nanofarad, it's up by half of one. 200's bang on according to that. I mean, so I've got this other thing which is a, a standard. It's called, it's called a capacitor standard. This is up by a little bit there, isn't it? Um, is it half a percent? Something like that. That's up a bit, it's one percent. The um, And that might be better. So one of these is up by quite a bit. That one's up slightly, and six is up by quite a bit, which is probably a combination of five and one. It'd probably be one, was it? No, maybe. I don't know. Anyway, nine is up by that much. Yeah. So that's getting up there. One microfarad, not too bad. Two, not too bad. Yeah. Four's. So low. Five is really good. Six is really good. Seven, so high. Eight, really good. Nine, not bad. Ten, really good. So yeah, I'm happy with that. I mean, it's close enough. Uh, the 100 nanofarad seems to be the biggest error in the tens. I think those are the worst ones, but that's not bad. Yeah, I mean, yeah, we'll see. It's, I think it's close enough. So that's that done. I think I'm happy enough with that. And the next thing I want to look at is also a capacitor standard. Well, should we do the signal generator and do those capacitors? Should we do those first? You spit the handle screw. Yeah, it's throwing a capacitor say because it's handle screws are over here. It's like this far away from it, so it's affected the capacitance of that terminal. 
<laughs> yeah, yeah, he's the one screws. Eh? He should have used stainless, and uh, he's the one stainless type. That should be mild steel, not stainless, I don't know. Um, Tilms on. No, it wasn't. It's not German. It's Hungary. It says it right here. Made in Hungary. Right, so this just needs to clean up and I can put that away. Yeah, well, so I do want to have it in this room somewhere. I just don't know where yet. I need to find a gap. <laughs> Usual situation. So the question is do we do the other capacitance unit? Which is some more panel beating. Or do we do the capacitance? Which I also want to turn to another video. Did I finish my coffee? I'm going for a drink. I did. Yeah. Um. Uh, which one do we do? Do we do. What? Well, I mean, still got this washer here. Should I fix my hammer? I think I should fix my hammer. You reckon? Before I do anything else? So I split, slip and shove a splinter into my finger to go the metal splinter. Yeah, that's quality. <laughs> Let's get some tidying up done. Okay. Which thing are we gonna do? We're gonna do the. I should do a. I should do a pole, shouldn't I? I'll do a pole. And we'll see what we come out with there. What we're gonna work on? Popular demand. I'll get my drawer shut. I'll put in these tools away. Be great. Nothing thing worried about is getting back open again. <laughs> right. To a pole in a second, and we'll see what we get. Show us units you'll vote. Well, one of them is, I don't really want to pick up because it weighs a ton. <laughs> oh no, you're all falling over. You guys drunk again. Um, well, it might be easy if I spin this camera around. Just do that. The pile of shame. <laughs> Alright, so. Thanks for work on it. Here is a Keithley. I'm going to be doing, I haven't even powered that up yet. I really need to do that. So, this is the capacitance standard, which I showed in a previous video, which needs some panel beating work and it had a fault, which I say, I think I might have accidentally fixed it when I opened it up to have a look inside it. I'm hoping the fault's still there, so I'll show you fixing it. And then we've got the generator here, which I've done two videos on already. This beastie. And that needs capacitors in it, which I got in a mail bag recently, which are in this bag. Just four capacitors, screw capacitors. So I'll take the top bulk hammer off, replace the caps, and hopefully I've got the right ones. So. Yeah, there's the pile. There's something else that you can't see just yet. It's the just at the back there. There's other things I need. To, look, this is a budget. This is something to fix. Um, these are the boxes, and here is a Valhalla generator, which um, I have sit, had sitting there for ages, waiting to get around to fixing it. That's what I've done videos about before. I've done a couple of videos on it. Refurbished it. I had it for a while. It worked. And then I was trying to do a recalibration on it because it was slightly out. I had some issues with not quite working right. And I think there's a digital problem with the circuitry, digital control circuitry. And um, I tried to, I'll just do a recalibration on it and it went completely 
out the wall just completely went shit so that's something i really need to dig into i haven't got around to that it's on my pile but it's been there for a few years now we really need to get around to that one and now i've lost the hdmi because i moved the cable off and out because it's crapped out it does that I'll move the cable around okay so um, Okay, pole is started. You multiple poles, yeah. Yeah. So a lot of stuff I you see me do videos about, they end up in my other room, which is like a storage room. I can do work out there as well. I do have a, a bench set up out there, but it's set up for doing RF stuff, right? So I've got the Marconi 2955 out there. I've got the HP power supply. Um, can't put the model number is now. Three, four, four, six, or something like that. Um, can't put the number is now. Three, two, four, six. I can't um, Got that out there. A um, bunch of it off gear. Uh, my Siglent scope, the 2000 series, the very first one I got, and that's out there. Um, the Roland Swartz signal generator, some other stuff. I've got a, a bench set up out there. Now, I've done a, a couple of videos on CB stuff since I set that up and done some radio work out there and shown it. But I don't tend to spend that much time out there. And it's basically a storage room for the stuff which overflows from this room. So anything I don't tend to use, or I'll use rarely, um, ends up being out there. And, um, yeah. So... Oh, you choose Keith Lee's not on the list. <laughs> Floor looks like mine, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, so choosing something which isn't on the list. I don't know. The um, Yeah, so that's what it happens. A lot of this gear ends up being out there. I mean, the stuff out there which I've done videos about, and I then have for sale, trying to sell them, like things like those um, Datron power supplies, not power supplies, multimeters, which I've mentioned. I've got what three? I've got three of them out there, one hundred six twos, which I'm trying to sell. Exploding the bag caps as possible. Yeah, I don't know about that, but. I do try and sell some stuff, but New Zealand's not exactly a big market, and the stuff I deal with, the stuff I do videos about, what interests me, is older gear, right? So it's sort of late 70s, 80s, 90s sort of era, right? So, and they're not very popular pieces of gear, although eBay seems to think otherwise for prices, but trying to sell something like that over here is harder, because it wants them, you know, the cutting edge modern gear. So trying to get something which is you know worth paying you know it's so I, no i haven't done anything at all with that carefully yet haven't powered it up haven't tried it haven't looked at it um got it out of the packet did a mailbag on it and put it to one side <laughs> that's as far as it's been um yeah i don't know what's involved in that one yet but like i said i'm trying to get some space so Getting space would be, yeah, I don't know, the key is on top of the pile, wasn't it? UK's not bad, but isn't, yeah. Yeah. Well, New Zealand's very much, 
a country which looks it doesn't care about history too much well, it says it does but no it destroys history it knocks down old buildings because they're inconvenient and things like that so New Zealand doesn't really British history and old things it always looks for modern new what's new and shiny what looks impressive that's what kind of be you know the attitude generally I think so people don't tend to go for the older gear they want the new modern stuff because that's what people go for it's just the attitude generally so something a bit older isn't so popular with I think being UK which has history and people relish history more um, people be more interested in having equipment like that you know I, th I think that they go hand in hand I don't know um, it's good to be completely bullshit I don't know <laughs> that's just what I think Um, I need to have a drink. I'm going to quickly go have a drink and I'll come back. Drink has been gotten. So the poll so far is leading about the capacitor replacement. It seems I'm wearing the right shirt. Looks like we're doing caps. We're doing caps. A buildings here. Yeah. Anyway, okay. It's um. There's two caps then. Let me just rejig stuff here. And I'll put these hammers away because I don't need these right now. try and get this thing on my desk it's not small uh, what's the best way of doing this on its side I think yeah on its side I think it weighs about 30 kilos, something like that. <laughs> Maybe 25 kilos. It's heavy. <sighs> okay, so it's not much to get the actual casing off. Shouldn't actually be too hard to do. Although I should record an intro for it too. So a cool intro it might be better. I Means I have to move it around more. Right. Okay. So let's yeah I'll do an intro on it. Get the gear out ready. Okay. Then we'll record video on that. One screw no clips. That's two screws. Book it. Capacitor's got two connections. What if it not? It barely fits on mine. <laughs> barely. Um, set the camera back on again. Play foot will come up. Here we go. All right. Close the pole. Yeah. Okay. The people repair stuff in his end. Not so much, no. 
One each. Oh, I meant the covers. Oh, yes, the covers. Yes, you're right. The covers were indeed one screwage. Right, let's change view. HDMI is this one. Gotta get it further back. Ouch, is that splinter again? <laughs> Try that down. There we go. It almost fits on my desk. You get a sinking feeling. Do an intro for this thing. Oh, you're falling over again. One day I'll learn which way is zoom in, which way is not. <laughs> intro so this is part three of this thing I've worked on this thing a couple of times before did some repairs on it mostly to do with the front panel and switches and indicators and stuff like that and it does work it does actually function and I've shown it on my 18 gigahertz frequency counter which I've all repaired previously in another video if you're not sure about those check out my other videos playlist I don't know there'd be a list there for something I don't know there's a list there's a big list. Um, if you're interested in seeing the frequency counter repair or this thing repair, then check those out. So this is part three. They'll be linked the other sections, maybe at the end of the video and description. But this has got one little thing which has been bugging me since I did the last repairs. When I first did the work on this, a few months ago now, I didn't replace some capacitors. Because they're expensive. They're really expensive. There's four caps, which are big, which I didn't replace. So I've got some replacements, and hopefully they're the right ones. Hopefully they do actually fit. I went from memory about what size the spacing were. Were? <laughs> I went from memory... No. I went from memory from what size the spacing was for the screws for the capacitors. Because these are screwing capacitors, which is why they're so expensive. So, I've got some. I hope they're the right ones, because they weren't cheap. It's about $150 worth of caps. Four caps, $150. Not cheap, but let's get this thing apart and uh, we'll get into it and replace those and maybe we'll power it up again and see if it still works. Uh, let's turn this around again. <laughs> we need to put it somewhere else. I've done that one, let's finish. That's the uh, Zuyi Zotec oscilloscope multimeter thing, which doesn't work as well as Dave's one. Dave's got one of those to review as well, and his one worked better on the oscilloscope function. I mean, my oscilloscope did kind of work, but his was working better. I don't know why mine's so weird, but I don't know. Anyway, that's what they are. Um, let's bring it around this way. Try not to scratch my desk at the same time. I need to my back the other day, which is seems okay at the moment, but I'll try and be careful. So I did injure my back. Fell down some stairs. 
gave it a bit of a bit of a um, impact. Bumped my back as I fell down the stairs. It's only a couple of steps, like four heights, four steps high or something, and I slipped and uh, jarred my back. And it's sore for a few days. It's been okay, but I still feel it's not quite right. I'm trying to be careful. I'm not doing too much. Is that it? Yep, that's it now. Call this video. Hmm. <laughs> Let's hang off the edge of the desk. What's possibly go wrong? Oh, so this is the top side of the unit and this is the rear left corner so there's four capacitors in here and these are the ones I need to look at replacing this one here has already been replaced by someone a person that got this one was it Gavin I think his name was I'm trying to remember now I think it was Gavin and he actually gave me a bag of caps which we looked at before there they are and I think this one here was the original one that was in it which has been leaking yeah you can actually see corrosion on that that post there where it leaked. I had to do some minor repairs to the circuit board there. We had some corrosion on the traces and I think it actually entered the trace. And I was actually able to get to it and clean it up and solder over it and, and get that working again. Um, although I'm not sure it was actually completely broken, but I I did it anyway. So um, you put in a used capacitor. These caps tested kind of okay, but there was a bit of ripple on the supply line, so that's bugging me slightly too. I fact that old caps and the one of them has already leaked any one of these could leak at any moment so it's worth replacing them which is why it's been bugging me since for months ever since i worked on this thing it's been bugging me that i should have replaced these caps and i should have spent the money because i want this thing to be in a state where i can go and get this thing anytime power it up and it will probably work of course there could be other caps somewhere else in one of these other modules because there's a lot of stuff in here could always be one of those that goes but at least it won't be a main power supply cap which blows and then shoves a whole bunch of AC through the rest of the circuitry and blows up a whole bunch more stuff such as tantalums. Tantalums do not like AC ripple so I'm replacing these to make sure the power supply itself is as good as it can be and then hopefully it doesn't cause any cascade failures later on. Yeah it's got a high speed of the hasn't it? Yes it does. It's a nice unit. So this pops off. Should probably show that in video, shouldn't I? Put it back on. <laughs> this little cover here, this slides off, it's just there to brace the capacitors. So it's a nice little detail from HP. So the brace, you know, capacitors aren't wobbling around off the circuit board from vibration, it helps to brace them all together. I think this is a nice touch. I don't know if I can put that back on again, the new caps. We'll see. See if they're close enough to the right size. Anyway, I've got to get this plastic cover off the bottom here. It's got a plastic cover on there. I'll show you, actually. So those are the caps in here, and there's this plastic cover under there to protect you from giving sort of a zap when it's powered up if you're working on it. So some of these we can actually get to. We can get to those four screws on these ones, well, six screws there. We can get to those um, without having to mess around with it too much. We can get to them quite easily. Looks like there's two more screws here. What are those for? 
But there was something I didn't look at before. Everyone missed the cap. I'm just checking there. I think it's a module thing. So I think it's just a module mounting. It's fine. Um, yeah, so I've got these six screws that we can get to, and there's two here which you can't get to. Reason being is the high voltage supplies. So I to make sure you can't accidentally touch them. These ones, there's a low voltage. Chance of getting a zap, pretty, pretty unlikely. Um, unless you're standing in a puddle of salt water, maybe. <laughs> um, but these ones are high voltage, so I think they're like 70 volts or something potentially across it. So um, I can't remember now exactly. Probably less than that. But anyway, those are protectors. You can't get to those screws. So because I can't get to those two, I've got to take this panel off. Which isn't actually that bad. It's only got these little plastic clips here, which I'm also worried about breaking when I do them. But we'll take this panel off, and then we can get all these out without worrying about it. It's got these little nylon plastic screws in there, so you've got to be careful not to break those or overdo it because they've all snap. Nylon does go brittle over time, especially with temperature. If they've ever been getting hot, they drastically increases the um, they get hot drastically increases the aging rate, and they get brittle much much faster. So I've had power supplies where they've used nylon screws to secure the transistors to the heatsink, and they've basically just fallen off since I touched them. They just, just literally fell off. Because they've just gone brittle and just broken. Anyway, I think that's all of them. Yep, there's a the panel off. There we can get to these caps. side on let's go for the bottom one first got these one at a time Take it easy out. And interestingly, that felt a bit gunky there when I took that screw out. It felt like it had some gunk on it. This one leaked in that time. Or there's some flux residue I missed. So there's the capacitor. Looks fine. Um, yeah. So this is the screw type. You can see, and you've got a little vent just there. And this one looks alright, doesn't like it's leaked. It just felt like there's some gunk on that screw when I took it out. A little bit weird. And what's this one? This is a uh, 13,000 40 volt. Battery low? No, I don't have battery low. I'm running for power supply. Well, that's a consideration. Thirty-six thousand. That's not the right one. Let me get them all out. Because I couldn't get exactly the right values. So. 
So I couldn't get exactly the right value caps for some of these, so I had to substitute a little bit and mid-plate what I was actually getting. So that's a 40 volt 10,000. I've got a 40 volt 36,000. And annoyingly, they don't come with any screws. So if you had a different screw type, that would be a problem, wouldn't it? Keep going. I've got more. The red dot in the upper right corner is the recording light. That means I'm recording. So what you're seeing is my camera, which I do the videos with. This, this gives a much better view than like the, the other bench cameras I've got here, the other webcams. So I use this to give you a better view than doing a live stream. 40 volt, 13,000. 40 volt, 13,000. This is what I want for this. Like I said, I, I couldn't get exactly the right caps um, because they're rare, right? So I got these from DigiKey as well. And you got 100 volt, 47,000. Sorry, 4,700. So 4,700, 100 volt, 40 volt, 40 volt, 36,000, 10,000, 13,000. Don't know what these other ones were. That's uh, 42. So that's 42 sets. Um, 75 volt cap, so that's that one there. So this 100 volt one goes there. Don't know about those two. Can I see them? I probably can't. Yes, excuse the back of my head from that. Fully volt. This is 8,700, this one here. So I think this one is for this cap, and this one here is for this cap. Are they the right spacings? I don't know. <laughs> right. So I've unpackaged the caps. So I've got a 40 volt 13,000 microfarad there. I've got a 40 volt 10,000 microfarad there. I've got a 40 volt 36,000, and I've got a 100 volt 4700 all it brand I got these from DigiKey so the one I want is for this particular cap is this one here which is smaller than the one that was in it which is smaller again than the original which was this kind of size so it's amazing how they've got a lot smaller over the years so this is plus or minus 20% and I think the originals I don't think they had a marking on them, what they were. But the one that was in here, which is a substitute, was plus 50% minus, two, minus 10. But that's just a random one I put in. So this one has got to go in there. I've got to make sure I get the polarity right, obviously. There is a vent hole. And you can actually see the vent holes marked on the PCB down here. I don't know if I can get it on shot. I'll try and get it in shot. get it gonna get this a little bit lower so there's the capacitor marking there you can just see the positive on the back of the board and see it through the through the actual uh, PCB and you can see a hole there as well see the hole that's the vent hole so that vent hole should match up with a vent hole on this. Oh, you get closer. So there's a vent hole there. And this orientation should be that way. So that should be the positive. And it is. So you have to put it in that way up. Don't get it wrong. I'm pretty sure it might be quite a big bang if you got this wrong. Now, I'll have some more coffee.
right, that's half my cup of cup done. <laughs> half it's gone. So let's screw this one in, get it right way up. This is going to be tricky to get lined up. Especially if I drop a screw on the floor. That definitely makes it harder. Okay, vent that way up. Now we're trying to get this in and in place and lined up. Oh, that's so tricky to get in there. My fingers are a bit fat for this. Oh, I've got the screw going in. Hope it's in the right terminal. <laughs> Just spin it around. Yeah, I can see the vent. So, yeah, I've got the right one. It's not upside down. Okay. So I was debating doing this as a video, like just not doing a live stream on this and just doing a video on it. Just making it what it is, you know. So, so oh no. Do this part of the live stream as well. People like capacitive replacements, don't they? those two in. That's that capacitor done. This one next. Do some video. So it's that capacitor replaced. That's that one in place now. Now I'll take out the one above it. In this case the positive is on the left hand side. Well side towards the back I should say. Left hand side from you, your view. It is no signs of leaking, so that's 4200. So, this is one I've got to do a substitute on, right? So, I have to go to a thousand, so I have to go to 100 volts and 4700 microfarads. So, it's slightly beefier, slight upgrade, but that's not a bad thing. But also, well, there's that one there, this one here, a little bit shorter, so positive to the back. Let's try and get the screw in. Yeah, it's going in. Great. Hope it's in the right terminal. The vent, I can see the vent through the hole. So that means it's definitely lined up. It's definitely a critical orientation if I can see the vent through the hole. Not all PCBs have holes for the vents. It's nice this it does have it. But when I've come across these before, there isn't always a hole there. Sometimes you can't see it, you have to just make sure, but you definitely get it right. Pay attention to the markings on the cap or whatever and try and make sure you get the right way around. Let's do this one next. This one here, it positive is to the rear again. Here it is. Drop the screwdriver on the floor. So that's 8,700 40 volt. And no signs of leakage. I don't think. Oh, maybe there's a little bit. I don't know. You see some staining there? Is there a little bit of staining there? A tiny little bit. I think it's started to go. See that? Just next to the vent. Yeah, I think it's starting to leak. That's why I wanted to replace them. So that's 
So that was 8,740 volt. I've had to replace this with a 10,000 and significant difference in size. Don't tell the charge it camps first, no. Um, this has been powered up for ages. Or hasn't been powered up for months. It's been off for a couple of months. So there won't be any power in these camps. I'm not worried about that at all. I should probably mention that in the video though, actually. That's a good point. So these caps I'm taking out, if I'd had this powered up recently, you'd probably want to discharge them before you touch them. In some cases at least, maybe for the uh, the 75 volt one, you probably want to discharge it. The other ones are probably all right. Um, but this hasn't been powered up for months. Um, I don't know, three months, last month's powered up again. So they'll be definitely discharged. There might be any power left in these. They would have been gone long ago. So I'm not worried about that aspect. But if it's something you're just working on and you've only just powered up recently, then yeah, you want to be careful about that. Because you don't want to accidentally uh, zap yourself by touching terminals which have potentially had a bit of power left in them. Perhaps it has stored power for quite a long time. You know, certainly minutes, hours, sometimes days, months, not so much. Another coffee. Almost done. Right, so that's three of the caps replaced. This one's a bit of a difference in size. Um, yeah, this is a problem because this does not match the pace spacing of the holes. Uh, it's not the right one. It's not the right cap. And unfortunately, I didn't put any alternative spacings in there. Sometimes they'll put secondary spacings, they'll be like two sets of holes. Tied out for different suppliers, things like that, you know, different spacings. This doesn't have them. These spacings are different. That's awesome. Um, now I do have some more screw terminal caps, I think. Let me fish those out in case I happen to get lucky and have one that's right. Um, find the right parts. Big. Right. And I've just lost the shot again because I just nudged the camera lead and it's gone blind. Oh no, it's back. It's Greg. It's back. Oh no, it's gone again. Oh, this bloody thing's annoying me. I think it might be the lead. Pretty sure it's the cable. Come on, come back on. I should just replace the cable. Unfortunately, I don't have one. It's a micro HD or micro HDMI, something like that. And it upsets the camera when it does it. Actually crashes the camera because the camera doesn't know what to do with it. Let's try this again. Okay. We have a picture again, that's something. So I've got this box of parts. This is where the mailbag stuff comes to die. Um, <laughs> and I'm pretty sure I've got some some valves. Spare valves from some of my gear. 
Got a few more in here. I'm pretty sure I've got some big caps in here somewhere. Somewhere. I might have to go fishing. Um, I've got lots of small caps like overflow, stuff which doesn't fit in my drawers because my drawers are so full. Um, yeah, but I think I've got some big caps in here as well. I'll have to go digging. Let's move this off the desk a bit. This is going to get messy. These are all wire lead ones and they're 400 volt, that's not what I want. And what are these ones? Got some of these. Oh, these are pulled ones. These ones I pulled out the Datron 4700 because they tested okay. I thought I'd keep them just in case. Because these four leg ones, I'll show you that. These are a bit hard to get. Yeah, yeah. It's just tight. Wire lead, that's a valve. Oh, I might be out of luck here. Because I was different with like, things like this cap being in there, but it's all wire lead stuff. I haven't got any screw terminal ones. Damn. It looks like I don't have the right cap. Yep, that is a waste of time. It's not in there. I'm going to try and get this stuff back in this box. What's these ones? What's this lot? 2240 volt. Yeah, okay. Very good. Okay, so now I have the right cap to do the last one. Which is annoying. I wanted to complete this thing. That's not good. So, damn. Goes in the box. Goes in the box. So there's one I can't do. That's annoying. Oh, almost sneeze. Not quite. I'm thinking now if I've got anything out in the other room. Do I have any caps out there? I might have some out there, actually. That's possible. I might have some out there. Um, I can probably put this on these ones, though. Oh, two of them. One's bigger than the others. Doesn't really work, I don't think. Maybe? Oh, maybe we will. Does that work? Kind of. Not great. It's more likely to fall off and short something out if anything else. I'd just like to keep stuff original if I can, you know. If that touches that, it could be a problem. That's not gonna, that could spin there like that. If it shifts, nah, I think I might leave it out. Doesn't really need it anymore anyway. Just have like to keep original things in there if I can. Yes, I need to measure the terminal spacing, which means I need to do enough digikilder and attempt to find the correct capacitor. 
Um, yeah. So the original ones are, what are they? 13, I think they're 13 mil spacing, about 13. And this one here is about 22. Approximately 23 mil spacing. It's probably an imperial size, but I don't understand that rubbish. <laughs> I'm just looking at it now, I'm trying to get it lined up better. Twenty two points yeah, twenty two to twenty three mil spacing. Um was that seven sixteenths is it? I, I, I don't know. <laughs> no, what, fifteen sixteenths? Seven sixteenths. <laughs> Completely wrong. Um yeah, okay. I just wish I could change that one. Let's make sure I've actually got the right value for it, shall we? Okay, so I even got the value completely wrong. Let's get this display out of the way for damage. It. Can't see. Let's take it out. Let's take the capacitor out. Because I've got those values off the circuit board, off the um, circuit board, off the service manual. Twenty two mil would be seven eighths. Okay, so it's probably a seven eighth spacing, there, isn't it? That's why right, it's got a little bracket in there. Enough to get the markings? No, not quite. All right, size of this bugger. Look at this. All right, so this is the capacitor I need to replace 20 volt, 30,000 microfarad. Right, so that's what I need 20 volt, 30,000 microfarad. Um, and that spacing there. Which appear to be 22 mil or so. I'm trying to see it from here. Looks about 22 millimeters there. If I look at inches, I've got inches on this side. That is about yeah, seven eighths. Seven eighths of an inch. Okay, so seven eighths or about 22 mil. Now then, what I need to go and look for? The size of this thing. Yeah, what's the diameter of this thing? It's um. About 50 millimeters wide, two inches, and uh, what's that? Ten and a half centimeters long. So Eleven, if you include the posts. Eleven centimeters, which would be look at this end, nearly four and a half inches, just under four and a half. Yeah, big boy. Hey, Joe, how's it going? So we'll put this back in again. <laughs> Seeing as I don't have a replacement. And it looks like it started leaking. Or it's just dust. Maybe, I don't know. No, it looks like it's just dust. Yeah, it's just dust. That's right. Yeah, it's fine. No corrosion, it's just dust in there. That's right. So it's not leaking yet. Should we test it before we put it back in? I reckon I should test that before we put it back in. In millimeters. Well, I think it's you know HP, so it's an American instrument. It's come from the USA. Um, this is an American brand, isn't it? Oh, it's a computer, com computer mate, computer mate. 
Det var dumt. Um, Sangd... Sangdown? Ja, det var det. <laughs> Connell Doubler? That's, that's an American, wasn't it? Um, so I was thinking maybe it's an Imperial measurement. I, I don't know. Um, anyway, let's have a look at this cap. Right, so this is the cap I just pulled out, which is that 20 volt, 30,000 microfarad, and I'm going to measure it on the DER, since I've got it here on the desk anyway, and see what we get. What does you think of it? For a start, I think this is an inductor. That's not a great start. <laughs> or it's a resistor. Uh, that's not what I want. Let's change frequencies, because it's probably because it's the value of it. There you go. 100 hertz. Makes more sense. Can it read it? So far, it's not looking promising. Let's do manual capacitance. Should I do a parallel? No. Can't read the cap on this thing. Can't do ESRs. No, can't do anything. So that's useless on this size cap. Can't do it. Too big for it. Let's try my other bench meter. See if that'll work. I see date codes. Um, well, I can tell you when it is, because I've got the serial number on the back. Serial number is uh, 2208A, so that makes it 1992. So let's change views, so you can see what I can see. So I've got this big chongqing cap connected up to the east tester and it can see it, it's fine, 37 microfarad, sorry, microfarad, millifarad, 47 millifarad. Um, and this is at 200 hertz, let's change frequency down to 100 hertz. That's 38 now. So let's chill, so I check the ESR, dissipation is 0.6, that seems a bit high. Um, ESR 0 0.025. No, I'm not sure about that. That might be a bit on the high side for a cap of this size. And the fact that this patient said 0.6, that's concerning. I think this cap's bad. Try the smart tweezers. Do you reckon the smart tweezers can do it? First thing is figure out where I put them. <laughs> They're here somewhere. I'm looking. Where do I put them? Oh, there they are. They're on top of the ESR meter. Cause, yeah. There they are. See what these think of them, don't they? Turn this off. Shannon tweezer, S and D tweezers, let's try these on here. Stretch it across. Thirty seven millifarad, look at that, you can read them. Wow it hurts. And it's saying C resistance is jumping around quite a bit as well. 
They can read it. That's surprising. Um, hold on. ESR. Jumping everywhere. You ain't happy about the ESR, is it? Saying sort of 20 milli ohm ish. Now I'm getting a better connection. I'm just trying to lever on a slightly, get better connection. Saying about 20 milli ohms. Alright. Yeah. Anyway, you can read it. That's a nice bit. I'm actually quite surprised. Anyway, so that measures capacitance okay, but yeah, I don't know, dissipation seems a bit high. Could I not make a bracket to put in your cap in? Yes, I could. I could make an adapter. That's a possible thing that could be done. A bit of circuit board and, and just have it attached between those. I mean, it's a doable thing. Other people have definitely done that, you know, using a standard uh, wire lead cap, you know. Um, but I want to try and keep stuff original if I can. So, this is a big cap. This is going to be expensive. This cap is probably 50 bucks. David, 20,000. Well, 20,000 is undersizing. I need to over oversize it. This is 30. I need more than 30. I don't want to step it down. If you find something more than 30, then I'll be going for it. DigiKeys will be going, most likely, because that's one of the few places that actually has these kinds of caps. And you're falling over on the floor again. You, need to, you guys need to stop drinking. Okay, so I'll put this back in again for now because I can't really finish it. Um, I might. Minus 20. It's 30. 30,000. There you go. 20 volt, 30,000. And it's measuring 37. And it looks like a date code of 81, doesn't it? So, 43 year old cat, well, 42 and a half year old cat. It's 42, that's a good number. So, this cat, let's have a close look at it. This appears to be a date code 8140, it sounds like a date code to me, based on the year of this unit as well. This unit was built in 1982. So, 8140 says one of the later weeks in 1981. So that cap is 42 years old, well, nearly 43, 42 and a half, and 42 is a good number. Don't forget your towel. Yeah, if you can find a 30,000 or something close to it, David, that'd be good. Save me some searching. Uh, but yeah, I'm gonna have to buy one of those, annoyingly. <laughs> Anyway, so the positive goes upwards. Let's try and get this back in. And you can't see what the hell I'm doing because I'm all the way over there. There we go. Come on, get in the strap. There we go. Right. Which way is positive? I don't know. The markings are over there somewhere, so something like that. Somewhere around there. I'm trying to get this lined up now. Let's move these out of the way for on something. And the stuff off my bench. Right.
Now, is that a vent I can see, or is that the wrong way around? I should have marked this which way up is on here, eh? The markings were over here somewhere when I looked at it before. So let's just move the camera out of the way so I can have a look. And get a torch, because there's still not enough light. Where are they? I can't see the bloody markings. There they are. Yep, markings in the right place, so I think I've got the right orientation. Can I see the vent through here? Yep, there's the vent. That's right, I've got it right around. I may never even powder this up anyway, until I, uh, I get the new cap anyway. Nothing at 22 mil. Oh, damn. Ted's? Never heard of them. Ted's caps? Never heard of them. Well, you look for 7.8 rather than 22 mil in case it comes up under that. Sometimes I list them one way or the other. I did not accept when I was buying these other ones. Oh, some parts are on the floor. Infrared sensors, apparently. Bag of infrared sensors. I don't know where I've got them. I think they're in a bundle of things someone sent me, maybe? Or oh, had them somewhere? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> They'll be useful for something one day. Uh, let's have a look at this address you've given me then. Rob, let's see what that is. Go on, load. Ted's.com. Didn't even know that existed. Well, wow, okay. So, <sighs> four hundred eighty-three pages. Oh, I think I need to narrow that search down. Okay, that's a good sign. I didn't really. I haven't even heard of them. Thanks for the tip, Rob. Now that's. Oh, I have to bookmark that one. Bookmark. Bookmark. Um, bookmark this tab. Yes. Ah, uh, hold on, I'm in Chrome, not... Hold on, I need to go to my usual browser. Like that. I only use Chrome for doing YouTube stuff. Even though it's probably a better browser, to be honest. Right, let's bookmark it, this one. This makes more sense now. Bookmark under electronic suppliers. There we go. So I do all sorts of stuff, not just capacitors. All right. I shall save that. Could be interesting browser as well. Okay, let's have a look. See if I can find something. Shall we pop this window out? Um, show this up the top. But have a look. Let's have a look. See if we can find something. Top window, top window, top screen. Here we go. Here we are. So, what do we want? We want 30. Can I do mini ferret? No. 30,000 microfarad. Voltage 20 volt. Search. Well, it's bouncing stuff. 20 volt, 30,000. Here we go. Um, 
prices look alright. Seventy three dollars, that's the one we go for. <laughs> A two by five, two by four. Case size one three quarter it's just under two inches wide. That's not the one we want. <laughs> Case size two by four. Okay, so these are very similar size to what's in there, two inches. Two by four, two by four, yep. So those are the ones we want, it's one of those two. Um let's have a look at them in more detail. Yeah. Mipco screw terminals. Does anyone see anywhere where it says what the screw terminal pictures? They look about the same, to be honest. Okay. Well, they have them. Apparently, they're in stock. Tolerance minus ten to plus seventy-five. That says quality right there, doesn't it? Plus <laughs> minus ten to plus seventy-five. It's a broad range. And they're both in stock, so I can at least get them. I wonder what the postage cost would be. Yeah. Right, that's something. We can get them. And the spacings are probably okay. They look about right. Visually look about right. This one's better to tell because of the angle. Um, Maybe there's a standard they'd here to or something based on this diameter, the screws are this far apart. Uh, I don't know. Maybe there is. But I know the one I've got now is definitely the wrong size. So, one of those. They're both Phillips. Yeah. And the specs are basically the same, aren't they? They're basically the same, from what I can see from that. Let's probably data sheet something for these things. There's no data sheet in here, is there? No. There's an eBay listing for them. <laughs> what could be wrong with those? I'm sure they'll be fine. Exactly the same picture. The same price. Postage, $85. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah. So, yeah, still on eBay, but it's exactly the same part. <sighs> yeah. Postage is more than a capacitor. At least it is from eBay. It may be cheaper for directly from them. Okay, well, I'm going to have to look into this and get this sorted out later on. Um, yeah, it needs replacing, though. That cap is not looking right to me. What we could do, actually, is compare the cap I got against the one that's in it and check the dissipation and ratings on that one. We, had, we didn't do that. We could do that. Let's do that. Let's go to a. Let's do. Let's do that view. All right. I've got to find a cap again. There it is. Nice, so I've got my wire stuck. Here we go. Right. Compare it to the new one. The 
And that's changed to 120 hertz for some reason. 100 hertz, always use 100 hertz. So that's saying 32 millifarad. Dissipation of 0.13. ESR 0 0.0066. So that is definitely better than the other one. Um, yeah, dissipation is a fraction of it. One sixth of the other one, isn't it? Well, maybe a fifth. Put one three. It's probably one fifth of the other one. So, or just the, maybe a bit less than actually a quarter of the other one. About a quarter of the other one. So it's definitely a lot better with that cap. So yeah, I'm pretty sure the one that's in it is on its way out. Yeah, I'm sure eBay is more expensive. I mean, shipping from eBay used, didn't used to be that bad. This is getting ridiculously expensive. Time to make an adapter. Potentially. Wouldn't I have to gut that capacitor to get the leads basing on the posts? And then I've got to try and attach onto them, and you can't really, because these are aluminium posts, right? You can't solder onto them. Yeah, I knew this would be an expensive exercise, but I also knew what I needed doing. Hmm. Yeah, I'm going to spend some money, aren't I? Unfortunately. Just turn the camera off for now. Right. So, yes, I need to buy another capacitor. I wonder if there's any other gear I need to get caps for whilst I'm on their site or any other gear I could get off their site to help combine the postage cost and get an effectively cheaper capacitor. I have to look around the site and see what else they've got there which I could potentially get. Um, yeah, let's have a look. Yeah, I mean, I have to look at that. I mean, if I, because I have to like spin it. Well, oh, do I? One hole will line up, right? I've only got to offset the other hole. I need to shift one hole over by twelve mil. I want to drilling a hole in a circuit board is an option. And just mounting it through the new hole. And sandwiching it and hoping for the best without a via or plated through hole. It's probably a bit of a bodge though, isn't it? I'm thinking about it though. There is a trace right there. At least on this side. It wouldn't be pretty, but it would work. <laughs> I'm, I'm actually really tempted to do that. Drill a hole for the circuit ball. Let's take his cap back out again. I want to have a look at this. I'm looking here on the top side, and I know you can't see what I'm doing right now because I haven't changed the camera. Yeah, let's push one of these buttons. Let's push a random button. 
Um, yeah, let's push that button. You're some kind of you, at least. And what I'm going to do this time before I take it out, I'm going to put a mark on it. So I know which way is up a bit easier. Up is that way. Yeah, I mean, yeah, possibly. That might be a nice solution. And the top side's got nothing. So there's only one trace, and that's on the bottom side. The top side has got no traces on it. So. It's only the bottom side that matters anyway, and there's a trace there. Um, I don't really want to do that though, that's a bit of a bodge. I suppose there's not traces on the top side, but you've got wires on it. I'm really surprised they haven't done that. Yeah, well, it's still pretty heavy though. It's not lighter than this. I mean, this this needs that strap on there, right? It needs that strap to hold it because that's really heavy. I don't know, oh, 100 grams. I don't know. I'm guessing, and that's literally half the weight. So, um, I mean, that would go in like that. Yeah, I'm definitely thinking that I'm actually really tempted to shoot a hole in a circuit board. That would still work. I could get a nice screw mounting onto into the trace. I'd have to scrape away the um, the solder mask and maybe tin it with some solder. So it's got something to bite into, so this is the copper. So it's got a bit of protection here from the screw as well. I'm actually really tempted to do that. Is a bit of a bodge, but it will save me spending probably a hundred dollars on a single cap. Just by drilling one small circuit hole. Um, I'll show you on the camera what I'm talking about. So right now I'm thinking about solutions about how to fit this narrower spacing post cap. Obviously they won't fit in the original holes. But if you look at the actual circuit board here, you can see through the board actually, it's quite convenient. So you can see the little um, through holes. Lots of words there for a second. You can see the through holes here, which are plated, plated through holes. They've only got a really small surface area of copper on the top side, both of them. All the copper is on the bottom side. So the actual connections are made on the bottom down here, on these two posts. And you can actually see for this top one, the trace comes downwards and then goes around, right? So what I'm actually really tempted to do, it's a bit of a bodge. In fact, it's quite a lot of a bodge. Is to drill a hole in that trace. The quick spacing apart for these posts. And just use the bottom hole as it is. And then basically put a screw through right there in that trace. Now you can actually see we've also got this trace here snaking around but I think it's still going to be far enough away to be okay. As long as I'm careful you know, I'll tend to go probably to that side slightly to keep it away from there but basically where this will be is where the plus symbol is that's kind of where it will sit. 
don't know if I'm, can I mirror it on the back of Baldy and see? It's one hole. Try and get it round the right way. So there's one hole there. It gives you an idea of how far it's got to move, right? So it's basically where the plus is. Is where it would need to be. The plus is almost like a target. I'm really tempted to do that. I actually think that's an option. Because the contact's made in the bottom of the ball anyway. All I've got to do is scrape the solder mask off, tin it, and put, shove the screw in. I reckon it'll work. It is a bodge though. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking, because I've seen this before where they've actually had multiple holes to allow for different size caps. So I'm actually really tempted to drill a hole in it. Yeah, I would, have I would turn it very slightly so it's very slightly away from those traces, so it's not much. You know, a fraction of a mil probably. Not much at all. Just to get slightly further away from there, but I think that's what I might end up doing. I reckon that's the plan. Yeah, I think that's what I'm going to do. Let's do that. Let's bodge it. Of course, it means going back out to the garage to get my drill again. I'll be back in a minute. Okay, I'm back with the drill. Now the tricky bit is going to be getting this hole in the right place. So I'll start with something like a 2.5mm and I'll step it up. Gives me some chance to recover if I get it wrong. I do have some copper washers and some copper tape, so I could actually reinforce it. Um, we had a couple of washers. Not sure. I do have some. So, do you think I should do it from this side? As soon as I can see from this side. <laughs> no, that's not going to work. Okay. I need to figure out exactly where to put this hole though. That's the bit I'm going, probably going to get wrong, is getting the hole in slightly wrong place. Alright, what's the spacing on these bloody things? I forgot what it was. It's about 13. About 13 mil. Or half an inch. Hmm. 
Could be either one, actually. What I could do is just line it up and then draw around it. Just line it up and then draw around it. I'll put one screw in from the top and then I can get it lined up and then I'll draw around it and that'll give it the exact position of where it goes. That sounds like a plan. What could possibly go wrong? Apart from lots of things. I think I just made that drill in the way, didn't I? Yes, I did. Yeah, even getting the screw is going to be tricky. And I lost the lock washer. Oh no. It's on the floor somewhere. We're good there. I'll find it. I've got to try and get this in there. That's not going to be easy. Stainless screws don't want to stick to the screwdriver. For some reason. Let's try that. Magnet. More magnet right next to it. No. Not enough. Damn it. Stainless screws. Well, that's annoying. Everything's got to be hard, doesn't it? Everything's got to be done hard. Okay. I'll just mount the capacitor like that way around, eh? That would be right, wouldn't it? Let's mark that out. I can figure out where the centre of that is. That's the easier way of doing it. And I want to have it slightly off to one side. Kind of. Gives me a ballpark idea or anyway. Okay. Let's take that back out again next, it's in the way. Dropped it inside the chassis. <laughs> I'll bigger that now before I lose it. Come on, fully up. There we go, fully up. Great. Somewhere there's a lock washer for that thing. It's on the floor or on the desk somewhere. At least I can see this better now, I suppose. I can actually line it up. Look where the centre should be. So you reckon half inch makes sense, eh? Half inch makes sense to me. And if I do a half inch check on these ones, because they're the same space, eh? Yeah, half inch. So I'll do it this way as well. Trying to get lined up that way. Half inch centre would be about there. 
which looks about right. Okay. As Dave would go, let's get medieval on his ass. <laughs> right, so I've decided to bodge this a little bit because there is actually room to drill another hole through the circuit board here into the trace, which has the connections, and I can then use this spacing to fit mount it. So that's what I'm going to do, I'm going to drill a hole through and I'm going to make myself a mounting point for it. It's a bit of a bodge, but it's better than spending $100 on one capacitor. So that's what I'm going to do, I think. Um, we're going to go ahead and drill a hole through this. I'm sure it'll be fine, what could possibly go wrong? I'm sure nothing would go wrong, eh? Right. One little hole. Now let's have a little look, see if it looks about right this way. We have a double check. It looks certainly very close. Alright, I'm going to carry on with this and I'll hopefully mount it. What I'm going to do is, obviously, when I drill the hole through, you get a better shot, you can see what I'm talking about. I think I did go very slightly closer, I've got to move it very slightly bigger or further apart when I drew a second hole. So, this is what I'm talking about here. There's an original mount hole, obviously. And I need to move it closer. I'm actually very slightly close here, so I need to move it very slightly over. That's why I always start with a smaller drill bit first, because it gives you some room to get the positioning just right. You can double check stuff, and then you can just tweak it as you go to a bigger drill size. Like when I do the next size, I can push it this way slightly and get it lined up better that way. Um, so that's what I will do. So I've got a big pad right here, which means I've got a space to put a screw onto. So that'll be okay. Um, all I'm going to do is got to take this solder mask off here, and I'm probably going to tin it. Put some solder on there to tin it, so it's got something to screw the bed into without going straight into the thin copper. Gives it a bit of a surface area, should make it a bit more robust. And um, I could always do something like put a copper washer on it. I do have some copper washer, or even a copper tape. Um, that might be an option, but it may actually be worse because of the adhesive and stuff like that. But I'll put his tin it, and that'll probably be good enough. I think it'll be fine. Yeah, that washer I think is on my desk somewhere. It it wasn't on it when I put it in, so um, yeah, it wasn't on it when I put it in there the first time. So it hasn't dropped in, inside it. It's somewhere else. It's not inside the unit. I would like to find it, but I know where it's not. It's not inside it. <laughs> okay. Um, let's just move this over a little bit. Next size bill. I'm going to go to a full wheel. Still got some leeway there yet. Check the space thing in visually. I think I'm still slightly close. And 
what size do I actually need for these screws? I think it's probably about five, is it? Five is pretty close. Five slightly bigger. I might try four first, see if that's enough. Four is very really close, or four and a half, I should say. Go through. What I'm going to do is just enlarge it with this on it. Because I think a five is actually a bit on the big side. Hope it actually lines up. Half inch is the perfect size of thirty mil oil plugs. Oh, yeah. Okay. Holes. Line up pretty well, but looks at that. Yeah, see if that goes in. If it does, then I'll tin it. Just, just a little bit on the outside edge of that. It's only just in there, really. Yeah, it's only just going. Going to bring it very slightly more. Now, where's that washer? <laughs> there it is. Found it. So let's tin this thing. I'm sure bits in my iron actually. my fiberglass brush. Yeah. Alright, fiberglass brush, I've got to take off the solder mask and then I can tin it. I've got a left handed so you can see what I'm doing, how's that? Of course I could use a knife, that no, also works. Tough solder mask on this one, it's not really touching it. Small knife, it is usually it'll do it. I 
not too bad, but it could be some kind of vision. <laughs> So it's not quite as nice as the original gold plate, but uh, it'll do, I suppose. I'm actually going to go past where the screw's going to go to give it a chance to actually go through that coating today as well. Right. So there you go, there's the hole prepared. I still have to tin it yet because I want to reinforce that original copper because there is obviously no copper on the other side, there's no via there. It's purely that surface copper. So I want to reinforce that a bit with some tinning. So it's got a bit of protection and actually helps to spread across because when you're using something like this where you've got these washers on, these little star washers, they dig in, right? And which gives you a whole bunch of contact points, which is fine if you've got a large contact area and double-sided and obviously this relies on touching on the equivalent of that on the opposite side of the board and we don't have that now okay there is nothing so before it's coming through this now it's got to come through the screw and touch on this side so I need to reinforce this some more make that more robust and I'm just going to do that by tinning it and that should give it something to bed into and gives it a greater surface area effectively and protects it somewhat so I'm going to do that there but it's come out fine Okay, that's relatively even. Clean the flux off. Now, so I could also do, I could also put some copper tape on the top side of the board. And then run that through the via, or through the um, through hole. Vent hole next. <laughs> no, I'm not putting another vent hole in. <laughs> it would be fine. Um, I don't know, I think I'm probably over analysing this. I think it'd be fine. Because right now it's all going through the screw into the board here rather than being direct contact onto the pad. If I put some copper tape on the top side, it give it contact area through that side as well. I think I'm over-analyzing it. I think I'm overdoing it. So there you go. That's all tinned up now, ready to go. So we can put this thing back together. It should be fine. I hope.
It's not your solar light. Yeah, okay, well. I'm using because it's going to bed into these um, washers, right? It's only really thin. It's only really thin, thin cutting. I was trying to spread it out, so it's quite thin. And these will dig in, right? Don't forget these little star washer things. That'll dig into it when I do that up. So that's not going to be going anywhere, I think. I think it'd be fine. I'm just trying to protect the copper. Because otherwise it'll dig into the copper and cut holes through it. Then I'll make a very good contact. So that's the reason I've done it that way. I mean, I could have done another method. I could have put copper tape on there. Clamped onto that. Maybe. Um, but I think this will be right. Don't forget, it is a bodge. We have to bodge it right, don't we? I know what you're saying about the solder deforming, right? That's basically what you're talking about, is it deforming? And then it, things get slack. And if this is a big lump, then yes. But it's just really thin. And this is going to get squashed flat pretty soon when I do the screw up. <laughs> so I'm not too worried about it in this case. A bit of lead on there. Get rid of that. I think I'll put this in the right round, eh? Do you think I should check? I think I should double check. I'm not certain I'll put that in the right round. Definitely double check. Yes, I did put it in the right round. Nice and tight. 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 Okay. It's all tight. Should be all tight. Okay. Let's put this plastic cover back on again. It's not likely to explode or anything, is it? Well, probably not anyway. Yeah. Especially as it's also an expensive capacitor. <laughs> Don't blow what expensive capacitors up. It's a 10 cent capacitor, who cares? But it's 50%, uh, $50. No, no, I think, don't think I want to blow a $50 cap. Where's the other screws? There's one there. Yeah, just about time for smoke test. I can also check the ripple and stuff like that as well. It's getting kind of in place, but not done up yet. Let's see more to go in. Put that slightly more. the last one go there right let's flip this thing around um I still want to get to these so I can test them. Yeah, awkward, but okay. I was going to use multimeter. Check the AC ripple on multimeter. Be good enough. I could see it the multimeter before, so yeah. Um, I'm gonna get this thing around so I can see what the hell I'm doing. 
Everything's falling apart. Let's get the DI out of the way. It's upside down. Come on. I should use this one. I was going to use the flute, but well, the other flute with 175 because it's a convenient one to use. But I think I'll use this one. And I want to do. Um, yeah. What do I want to do? That one. Is that what I want to do? No. This one. That's what I want. Oh, let's check this thing for Ripple now. First power up after replacing the caps. Uh, fingers crossed it doesn't go horribly wrong. <laughs> power is plugged in. Power on. 230 volts coming in. Wait for any bangs when capacitors are exploding. We will put one in backwards. It happens. <laughs> Alright. Let's stick this on here. Oh, I can't stick on this. Okay, here we go. Through there. The hole's in the wrong place now. So what we got here. 30.1 volts, 0 volts. This is on standby, right? So it's got ovenized oscillator and stuff on that, which is booting up now. Let's turn it on fully. It's got some loading on it then. So 11.3 volts and no AC. That's pretty good. Next one. That one before did have some AC on it. This one's 29 volts and about 0.2 volts AC. 20 volts AC is a lot of ripple on that one. That line, that line also had ripple on it last time as well when I did the original testing. This one here, same deal, 52 volts, 0.2 volts AC. So there is still a lot of ripple there, but it's definitely no worse than it was the original caps. It's definitely better. And 16 volt with 0.3 AC. Now these ripples might get better as these caps, I don't know, age a bit, they settle in a little bit, have a bit of soak time. So I expect they'll get better. And the battery still worked. It's been sitting there for three months and it remembered the last frequency I used. So the battery that I did on this is still working after three months. That's good. Nice to know. So let's look at uh, millivolts AC. We'll do some tests with this. We'll check them again. So 175 millivolts on that one. It sounds like a lot, but this is a high current, it's a bloody supply on this thing. Yeah, 380 millivolts on that one. 333 and 407, 406. So those are still quite high ripple amounts though. But for a main supply, it's probably not too bad, really. It does have a lot of current going through this thing. So 
it's probably fine. Don't forget these are before the regulators. This is purely off the diode bridges. So as the diode bridge is coming in with these big bulk cap smoothing caps, which are helping to smooth that diode bridge out, right, to get the DC. And so some ripple is going to be there. Obviously after the regulators it will be a lot less, but this is the pre-regulator section. And I think that's alright. It's certainly a lot better. At least I know these caps are going to be okay for quite a lot while yet. I'll certainly again. So at least I know these caps will be okay for quite a while yet. Um, unlike the original ones which could fail at any second. Anyway, it works. It still turns on, that's something. Forming, that's the one I'm looking for. Forming. Reforming. Yeah, that's what I was looking for. Reforming. So, obviously when the caps, you first get them when they're new, they have to reform and form, right? Form or reform, depending on what you want to think about it. Um, because they've been sitting on a shelf for years. I mean, these ones, I think a couple of these are date codes of 2021. So they're like three years old, sitting on a shelf. And they have to build up their oxidization layer or oxide layer. So they have to reform. And that will mean the capacitance will change and the reactants will change, things like that. So the ESR will improve, that sort of stuff. So. Um, over time it will get better once you've had a bit of use it's completely normal let's try these again see if anything has changed 173 380 still yeah nothing's changed yet 330 yeah these actually look exactly the same these aren't changing 410 yeah these aren't changing at all so yeah I think that what they are what they are but um as this is a high current supply, as I said, there's a lot of power going through this thing. Um, there's big diode bridges in there, and it's got a lot of work to do to smooth all that power out. So, if I turn this off, take some loading off, you probably find that ripple gets a lot better. Let's have a look. You know, too many volts. See, so it's relative to loading. 152. You know, like six <laughs> and two, maybe, maybe two. So, massive difference between loaded and unloaded. So, not surprising. Dropped a few mini volts. Yeah, maybe. I mean, it will come around. I think it's fine. The original ones are really bad. I think there's up to like half a volt in one of them. Remember rightly? Yeah, half a volt. 0.6 volts, I think it might have been. I don't know, I have to go back and look at the original video. The original video had it in it. Anyway, it works. I'm just looking at the marking on here. Alright, so on top of here it says it's got a little indicator here saying 400 hertz and it's got the other two for saying 60 hertz. Doesn't mention 50 though. <laughs> I know, 50 doesn't matter, does it? It's close enough. Right. Well, I think I can put this thing back together. Hopefully. I need to get some spacing because it's, you know, all over here.
Did I record video doing that? I don't know if I pushed record or not when I was doing those tests. Did I push record? No, ah, doesn't matter. I've replaced them. People are going to assume they're, they're okay. <laughs> Yeah, I'm mean, not saying I could have done. Actually, actually done leakage tests on them. I absolutely could have done that and actually observed them. I didn't, but I could have done. We'll see about this is so damn heavy. But I didn't have anything to do 18 gigahertz. Now I do. Come on, get in there. Okay, this top cover's slightly bent actually. Pretty sure it's covered slightly bent. It's might be easier to do it this way. Yeah, this cover's definitely slightly twisted. Or oh, something sitting in the wrong place. Yeah, this bottom cover doesn't, or well, the top cover rather, doesn't fit as well as the bottom cover does. Anyway, it's in. It's done. That project is now completed, finally. <laughs> I can stop bugging me now about the fact it wasn't right. It wasn't finished. It was actually bugging me quite a lot. I suppose I should show power it up again, shouldn't I? Well, there you go, it's back together. These are the cats we replaced. See, it's got the oven turned on, turned the power on. And that's all good. So, the fact it's actually turning on with the frequency I used last time, still on it, means the battery pack upgrade I did last time, well, 
replacement. That is obviously still working fine because it remembered the settings. So that's a good thing. Um, I don't know if it will actually last without power on. I don't know, it's been a few months and it's been working fine. So um, it's otherwise right. But it seems to be working fine now. It's should be good. I mean, I know, I know I've already done the thorough testing, checked the output and stuff like that. I've already done that before, so I'm not going to do that again. It works. Caps are done. So if you found it interesting, subscribe over there. Patreon support link over there to help me buy things like this to do repairs on. And other videos down below and in the description and what have you for playlists of things to look at. Lots of stuff there. I've done over a thousand videos. Well, I think it's like 1300 videos or something I've done now. Numbers are like 1200 and something. But I've done like over 1300. There's a lot of work. There's a lot of work in that. Anyway, catch you later. Alright. Alright, that's that done. This can go back away. I might look at this caps later on in more detail. Maybe try check leakage on them, stuff like that. See if I can do something with them. I don't know. They might still be good as spares. I mean, if they're not leaking, they might be alright as a spare cap to replace one which is potentially worse than that when I get a piece of gear which has got like one which has leaking on it or something. It might be an option as a, you know, a last resort. <laughs> um, depends on what the gear is. I mean, I don't, I don't mind using a used cap if I think it's okay in a piece of gear which isn't going to get much use and maybe it's low cost, right? If it's something like this, which is worth a little bit of money, you know, it's worth keeping this in good condition. But if it's something which isn't so critical, then chucking in a used cap is probably not too bad if it's better than what's already in it. Although, obviously, you might want to put a proper cap in it, but, you know, a new one. But if the cap is, you know, $50 and the unit's worth $50, why would you bother? Um, yeah. Anyway, that's, that's that project done. Okay, so it's... God, it's nearly 20, 10 to 2. I know I'm thirsty and going for a pee. <laughs> Alright. Um, okay, I'm going to call it a day, I think. Let's get back over here. Move these back over here. I never even got the camera out. This thing. Never even looked at this. I'll play it later on. I don't have to do it on a live stream. It's just an idea. It's something I'll think about having a tinker with if I needed to to fill in some time, make some content. But I think we had enough things to do already. Um, yeah. Okay. So, so thanks everyone for dropping by. Um, give us a thumbs up before you leave. And there's a video I've already published. It would have gone live a few hours ago, actually. Mailbag Sunday instead of Mailbag Monday. Just to catch everybody out. Reason being, I'm doing the new Siglant STS 800X HD review, which is coming out. And I'm going to do that a day earlier. So that's going to come out on Tuesday instead of Wednesday, kind of thing. Um, it's going to shift things forward about a day, or well, half a day. It's actually about 12 hours earlier, basically. So, um, yeah, so watch over that. You know, if you want something else to watch, go and watch the Mailbag video because that's out. And then in a couple of days' time, watch the signal review. And a couple of days after that, maybe the teardown, maybe the Cobra conversion. I'm not quite sure yet, like I said before. So well, thanks for dropping by, and I'll catch you next time. It's going to be a while before I do another live stream. I'm working seven days a week for the next month. So I'm pretty busy, and I've also got all my spare time is full as well. And I've got more review stuff coming too. Yay. More views. Great. So, catch you later, and thanks for dropping by.